viewers, listeners. Dreadful news today out of Great Britain. Her Royal Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, has perished. This is mortifying news for not only our nation, but for, of course, the world. What will we do in these trying times? Can we look to the Lord? Look to ourselves, our friends and family? All I know is, life will never be the same again. Pardon me while I drink this cyanide. Ah, keep calm and carry on. To the Dylan Joe Basement Podcast. I'm recording live from Australia. My name is Dylan. This is my co host, equal ownership of the Dylan Joe Basement Podcast, Joseph Collins. What are you talking about today? Well, there's only one thing on my mind today, Dylan. It's a very sad day for Britain and, of course, the world. Ah, her Royal Majesty, the Queen Elizabeth II. Passed on to the other side. I have one question for you, and I apologize. Oh, as me. as a dissenter of pardon England, me. yes, as a criminal, a criminal, a descendant of criminals. My I hope last, you don't mind me saying it. It's okay. My last name is Reed. For but, those of you that don't quite know, Reed stands for the color red, like Joe's beard. What and a scarlet letter! Hair. And it was given to criminals. In England and potentially Australia. And all of her royal subjects, New Zealand, Canada, all the places. Well, like cranky, you know, for being criminal. So I got deported. For Damn, good reason. For good reason. I'm and sure your great grandfather was a bugger. He was a bugger. We do come from, um, I'm going German now. And a larcenist. I, I honestly, guys, all of our listeners, <laughs> I, I, I tried so hard. You got so far, th- honestly, and in the end, it didn't even matter. It didn't even matter. Um, I, uh, I tried so hard. I thought we were going to last two hours doing an accent. It's going to come up again, I promise. Oh, it'll come back up, but we're not going to last two hours. I'm, I'm glad we made it this far. I'm going to try as hard as I can to switch between... Well, now you're switching to British a co- a, <laughs> to Switch between a British accent, accent. and a Bobby uh, Australian accent, because oh, I they blend get together, them mate. very confused. Oh, I can blend... Joe's got it down. I tell you them. We'll see what happens. I lose it immediately when so, I'm on. When I'm being recorded, I, I can't do so it. It's so hard. I can do it. It's really easy in the shower by yourself. I'm in the like shower? I'm nailing it. Well, like, there's no witnesses. It's easy, you know? Well, or in the car. I gotta say. In the car, um, too, yeah. Welcome to Dylan and Joe Basin Podcast. We're Dylan and Joe. Um, thanks for joining us today. If you're a first timer on our podcast, this is episode 62. Two, yeah. 62. And, um, and the first thing I said. When I was in the car and I was driving and I switched to a like radio station, which I know that no one does, and it yeah, said the queen has passed, and I said, "The queen has passed." <laughs> I didn't say that was the first thing I said. You just said it like that, yeah. I said it like that, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" I just think I have a feeling. I have a really strange feeling that this is I'm not the first person that's gonna this is gonna turn into something. And then, sure enough, within 30 minutes, I went on my phone, onto Instagram and TikTok. Everyone and said... the meme community has blown up. The memes are great. The memes are great. So... God so, save the memes. God save the memes. <laughs> Thank you for that one, Joe. So, today's episode is in respect of the Queen. We are highly respective, and we appreciate you. Um, well, but we got a couple things yeah. going on about the monarchy, and uh, we're going to get into it today with the monarchy, we're Joe. Let's go. Episode 60, 62. Today we're talking about monarchs. The queen is one of them, and uh, to me, I won't show all my cards yet. One of my cards might be a queen. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh. Monarchies are a very old thing, and for some reason they're still around, which is interesting. But uh, we'll get into all that today. We're getting into weird stories about monarchs and uh, the history of monarchy. And not just all about Queen Elizabeth II, um, but we'll get into her too. 
We'll get right into her too. There's a lot of interesting stories with the most um, important people in the world for the past 2,000 years. Yeah, and there's a lot more monarchies. But more importantly, we want to let you know that there has been an announcement at the... Um, uh, breaking news. The breaking news. The uh, managers at the pediatric blood farm that kept the queen alive have been laid off. <laughs> You see, this is affecting more people than just themselves. This is a widespread a ripple people, effect. A lot of people have uh, devastation. You know, been devastated by this. Yes. A lot of jobs have been lost. This is poverty stricken people now at this point. This is more than just a singular issue of her family or her country. This is a ripple effect that affects not only multiple people in their communities and economies, but also the world at large. The world at large. Mm-hmm. And the new queen is now a guy. And his name is Prince Charles. Yes, Queen <laughs> Charles III. Queen Charles III. I saw a clip of that where there was a guy on the news. Three times in a row on the news, he goes, the new queen, sorry, queen, no, Charles the Third, the new queen. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't not say it because his whole life he's only had a queen. The guy was he like 60 years so old. Hard. It's been all queen. Yeah. I mean, for most of our culture, modern culture, it's been the same queen all the time. Since 1953. Yeah. So anything you can think of. I mean, we just listened to the punk song with the queen. That song could be 40 years old. The queen's already been there for, you know, another 40 years. I'm good at math. <laughs> <laughs> Too damn long, I'd say. Too damn long, I'd say. And I'm, I'm sure I'll bring this up again, but obviously everyone knows this week they didn't already know. Queen Elizabeth is the longest reigning monarch, not just in the history of England, in the history of planet Earth. No one's ever been a monarch for longer than she has, usually because people wouldn't live for that long or be coronated that young, but there it is. I mean, I don't know if anyone's going to break a record. You think someone's going to reign as the king or queen of a country for longer than that? Yeah, I do. Meghan Markle. <laughs> <laughs> she's fit. She, she cannot be the queen. This, she's a mudblood. There's no way she can do it. She's American she's and she's not incestual. She yeah. Oh, man. Bummer. She can't be it. That was no matter I was what happens. on her. I guess I don't know the rules. Yeah. Um, but maybe Well, the rules are shifting, as we'll see in our stories here. Like, it's not always, you know, it's right. It's not always black but and what, white. But, um, but one thing it is, it's always white. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking old white people banging each other, cousins and sisters and brothers. Fucking creeps. Yeah, in America, it's called redneck. and, and Yeah. And well, American uh, royalty is all about money in Hollywood. So, I mean, the Kardashians are, I mean, they're culturally white, but they're not actually. They're uh, Armenian or something, right? Yeah, and they're fucking each other too, I'm sure. But oh, they're, yeah. they're not. Gotta keep the bloodline pure. That doesn't matter where you're from. To keep a dynasty going, you keep the bloodline pure. No, the difference is that they're, they're fucking each other, but they're not having kids. Oh, yeah. Well, it's they're fucking Kanye a, it's West. It's for sport. Just like <laughs> like, uh, pheasant, like, lo- like pheasant hunting. Yeah, or yeah. like Olympic triathlons or something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not for reproduction, and we're going to keep our bloodline pure. Um, it's it's for sport. Mm-hmm. So, sport fucking. Sport fucking. <laughs> The newest British thing out there. Well, that's also... But it's also the oldest thing. oldest thing. thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about monarchs. I mean, they're the, they're the uh, original sport fuckers ever. Because really, yeah. uh, the only way to basically have sex with one than one person back in the days of early uh, medieval times is really either you're a criminal or you're a lord. And anything in between, you're getting one person until you die. And you're lucky if you do. Yep. You're lucky if it's a human and not a sheep or a horse. But let's not digress too much. That's a different type of marquee. That's called Osama bin Laden. It's, it's a little different. I was thinking the bloody Welsh. <laughs> you know, this all started today when I was uh, I was eating breakfast um, at a uh, a restaurant that is much older than Queen Elizabeth. Really? Yeah. What year is it from? Do you know? Uh, late 1800s. I want to say 1897. The wow. Golden Rod. The Golden Rod. The Golden Rod. In Sounds York, very regal. In York, Maine. I was up there today, this morning, eating breakfast. And um, I went to the bar, and it's a great place to get $11 to get a, a couple of eggs, <laughs> some bacon, mm. some toast. And a a traditional un- English breakfast. Some unlimited beans. Unlimited coffee, and I had that. And there was this woman next Tea, to me. Tea, of course. This woman next to me at the bar seating there, and I couldn't help but... I want to talk to them, but I realized that her hat said penis. Well, that's fucking awesome. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah, she I want that that right away. She was probably the queen's age when she passed. No. Yep. She was like in her mid-90s. She was wearing a baseball cap just like this. Yeah. She was probably honestly in her 80s. Yeah. And it was just like this, and it just said penis across the top, and I said that's to myself... That's a cool broad. Wow. This is insane. And turns out that her hat said Paris <laughs> in cursive. 
<laughs> that makes more sense. And I thought, wow, what a good day for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what a better way. Ma'am, you're cool as fuck. I love how your hat says penis. <laughs> it's so cool. It was fucking, it was really, Score, this is one of things where it was, it. it was generally that funny to me because I was looking at this, I'm like, I know it doesn't, but what does this it say? This lady's it so It took cool. me a little too long to realize that Paris in cursive on a baseball hat looks like penis. Generally looks like penis. And it's so funny. <laughs> fucking hilarious that's fucking awesome yep so um that was the start of things that was also the second piece of clothing Mm -hmm. that i saw today in the same area within the same hour that was ridiculous this other guy you guys know who john goodman is right name what what movie is he from the flintstones the flintstones that's what we know (laughs) (laughs) he's fred flintstone um big lebowski I was walking, uh, I decided to do a nice long walk, and I see a distance, John Goodman, but it's not him, but with a stone-cold Big Lebowski face on, like, not funny at all. Yeah, Walter. And he's wearing a black shirt, just like mine, that says, My Wife is Hot. That's hilarious. All capital letters. I said, that's pretty cool, like, that's funny. And then, in lowercase, like, very small fine print next to hot, Mm -hmm. it said, P-S-Y-C- H O T. She was psychotic. Lowercase I C. <laughs> My wife's psychotic. His wife was right there, and I was like staring at him. And they're like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, I started laughing. I'm like, dude, your shirt's hilarious. His, his shirt said, My wife is psychotic. Dude, but that's. Capitalized I... the hot, and the guy was out there walking, and he was funny. And he did, and I laughed, and he just straight faced the whole thing. That's fucking hilarious. You know what? I never heard that before, but that's like this. You can't spell. Uh... You know, blank without blank. That's a great one. You can't spell psychotic without hot. You can't spell funeral without fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, never heard, I never thought of psychotic in the middle of the mm-hmm. word. And I also think that um, 99 times out of 100, if a guy has a black shirt with white letters that says, my wife is hot, she's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay as long as you have a spiritual connection with her. Yeah. I like the I'm with stupid and they're not wearing any shirt. They're just wearing like a nice blouse. <laughs> disrespectful uh, yeah. it's a good one so so john goodman and penis hat lady i mean you've had quite a penis day man. Hat lady, that, was a, that was that was pretty much my day um joe what was your day what's going on my day was boring as fuck i went into work got up bright and early uh packed my bags for the podcast and then went to the furniture store that i work at um to sell furniture and proceeded to scroll on my phone and look up research for the podcast for the next five hours because no one came in until the very last uh half an hour uh, where some guy did come in, I had to deliver his um, his little mirror that he bought. I brought it out to his car, yada yada. They always show up the last the ten minutes. Uh, it's like five hundred dollars. Was it this big or more? Yeah, well, it was that big, probably like square inches, but it's vertical mirror. It's like one of those you stand up and it like has the stuff on the floor, it has its own feet and stuff. You can tilt it back. Yeah, and so you forward. see your feet and your dick and your face at the same time. A whole body, a gotcha. whole body yeah. shot. Cool. Yeah. Well, I actually had one thing that was a little bit weirder than that, which is that I didn't even count this as a customer. I wrote it off completely. And by about lunchtime, I'm totally checked out. I'm like, if no one shows up by now, I'm already writing off the full day. I don't make any commission if no one buys anything. So I'm like, all right, it's another wash. And someone comes in and they ring the bell and I'm in the middle of um, playing Warhammer on my phone. So it's like, what the fuck? I'm trying to play a video game here. It's an annoyance. What the hell do they think they're doing walking into the store? I'm busy. You understand? So they walk in the store, and I have to turn the game off. I was going to win. I had to quit early. This motherfucker <laughs> thinks he beat me. Bunch of bullshit. He definitely didn't win. Yep. I made a huge comeback, and he thinks, oh, I made him quit. Whatever. In Warhammer? Yeah. Yep. I walk out, and there's an old lady in a baseball hat who, like, meets me. Like, she's going right through the store. She walks in, and there's, like, probably a teenage boy behind her. I go, I put on my a nice guy. I go, hi, how you doing? And she goes... Hi, we're not here to buy anything. Go, always love to hear that first. <laughs> uh, no, it's no big deal. We're just here to look around. Yeah, we're here to look around. And she goes, yeah, I'm, I'm Duke's wife. And I go, sick. I, I don't know Duke. Cool, man. Yeah. She goes, you don't know him? He works here. And I go, I only work Saturdays. He's never here Saturday. He never does overtime. I tried to give her a little dig because I was like, your husband's lazy as fuck because Milton's here every weekend and I don't ever see Duke here. Yeah. And in fact, I'm not even sure if Duke, Duke exists, okay? Because I never heard of him. I've been working here for nearly a year now. And she goes, yeah, yeah, we just thought we were going to wait in the car. We thought we would look around. Uh, Duke's going to open up the trailer for us. And I go, okay, fine. Usually I would hang out with them. I would sit around. I would act like I'm part of it. But I was so not about it that I just, I was like, all right, cool. Walked right back in the office, closed the door. And then 
one to two minutes later, she left, got in her car, and drove away. What the fuck? Was Duke even so coming? So she just told you Duke, she's Duke's friend, and then... Duke's wife, she said. Duke's wife. Yeah, he works here. He makes the stuff that you sell, she's saying to me. Never met the guy in my life. She goes in there waiting for Duke, and then she walks out and leaves immediately. I don't even know if Duke exists. But the teenage boy that she was with didn't say a word to me, and he just kind of just, like, stared around at the walls and stuff. So maybe he knows Duke. I don't know. I don't know. It was strange all around to me. Yeah. I was mostly just pissed off. Yeah, I get that. It was annoying. Customers are annoyance. Especially um, if you're not going to make any money. And the customer is always wrong for a majority of us who... Yeah. Uh, what do know, they know? They don't even work there. Exactly. How would they be right? Yeah. I'm fucking here 24-7. I know what the shit's going on. Yeah. I hate people. That's crazy. Um, well, so so me and Joe want to, you know, let you guys, after 62 episodes, get to know us better. Yeah. You know, between the monarch and... The passing of Queen we, Elizabeth. We, we made an agreement. <laughs> right. 62 episodes, we're going to measure yeah, we're our dicks. This, yeah. um, Just kidding, of course. Joe sells furniture on the weekends, and I clean up uh, period stains and, and cum stains on the weekend. Everyone's got to get theirs. And ice cream handprints and whatever it is. Yeah. and um, Ice cream. Vanilla ice cream. Vanilla, strawberry, whatever it is. Um, Mostly vanilla. Some weekends, I, I, I clean vacation rentals. Mm-hmm. And I, I do this. It's uh, so when they come and they, you know, oh, and they come they, when they come. They come early and they go. And they come often. They go. Who are you? I go. I'm just the cleaning lady. <laughs> you say no habla inglés. No habla inglés. Yeah, whatever. So that's what they expect. So I, I do. I do want to take a quick segment of this podcast to read some reviews of the work I've done. Absolutely. You're Let's talking about, about your reviews, and yeah. I, I want to share some of mine. So yeah, I'll do it. So far, we've we've had some five star reviews. It's great to hear. Um, for the past couple of years of one of the rentals that I've been cleaning. Great work. Um, and uh, we got one from a Brian C. <laughs> oh, we're we're gonna save his identity. That's nice of you. We're gonna save his identity. We don't want to, you know. We don't want out. you guys going after him, you know. How yeah, exactly. You, you, you know, you, I don't want him tracking are. me down. We're putting this guy out there, but um, uh, he deserves it though. But but if you're if you're in the car, you're at work, you're on your way to work, you're 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 in the bathroom. I, you know, we don't know where you listen to podcasts, Joe. Where do you listen to podcasts? I want to tell everyone where you listen to mine. Literally everywhere. Any given moment of the day that I'm not working, I'm listening to a podcast probably, including the one girl that you <laughs> were gonna go out with who thought you had special needs. <laughs> 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 because Joe, Joe went on a date, and they're like, I thought that this guy had special needs because he walks around work with, with um, what's that video game with the skateboards that we play on PS1 with the, everyone wears headphones? Oh, Jet Set Radio. Jet yeah, Set I'm Radio. Like, right, Jet Set Radio. She thought I'd be this guy with some Jet Set Radio because he, all, all Joe does is walk around with headphones all day, and she's yeah. like, I'm going on a date with that guy? I thought that he was like, uh, you know. He uh, said, I thought he was autistic, <laughs> is the exact quote. <laughs> and and ticket, just, just, for, just for the sake of things. Yeah. This girl fucking loved Joe. Once uh, you get to, when she met me, she never in the history. Of she kept fucking, trying to go on a second date. I wasn't into it, but she was definitely into never it. Never in the history. She kept texting me. Can anybody who's listening this ever in the world tell me an example where you you go you work yourself up for a, for a first date and you might have it all. You might have a sure. a, a social media profile where you look like you're the fucking champ and mm-hmm. all these other things. It's you and Joe went mimosas. into a second date where the girl's first impression was she thought that he was autistic. <laughs> and Joe shut her down. <laughs> <laughs> there is no case on earth where this is it. You gotta take the ones where you can get them. Because Joe listens to podcasts all day. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I get good. That's how he gets good. <laughs> I listen to all podcasts about how to get pussy. No, of course. <laughs> I listen to, well, it's whatever, I, you know, I'm on my fucking lunch break, whatever. I don't want, I have to deal with these people all day, whatever the hell they want from me, I I cannot tell them no. They can talk to me whatever they want. I need this, I need that. I get my time. I'm listening to a freaking podcast. I don't want to get people small talk about how cloudy it is today or how hot the coffee is. I could exactly. give two shits. So in my meantime, I'm not making friends. Sorry, I'm making friends. If that so, makes me autistic, so Joe, Joe, God Joe damn it, I wins. Am. If there was a trophy, I'd give you right now. It might be this Toyota. Um, oh, this is a Toyota. It's a, a Toyota 2000 GT. If this was a trophy, I could give you and say you're the only human on earth. <laughs> That someone thought was like you know in the program, yeah, and then they end, up, the going, they end up going home with you, yeah. After the fact, they realize you're not, and then they feel like idiots. Joe gets this trophy. It's the funniest thing I've ever heard in my it's life. It's a great honor, and I appreciate. 2000 GT. That's a well more than a million dollar car. But it's part of our decorum um, here. 
So that's where Joe listens to his podcast. <laughs> I, 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 I do. I a, listen to him constantly. I do. A, I, 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 uh, can't, I can't afford fucking headphones. So I um, mm. uh, usually I'm in the car 24 seven. I'm always driving around. That's kind of where I listen Crank to podcasts. Crank right there. Yeah. Crank it right there. So, Everyone's got their own way to listen. Well, that's it. So, um, so um, Brian C had a, a particularly, we've had pretty good reviews until this one time. Mm. This fucking. An anomaly. This fucking guy. I told this Joe this boy. This fucking guy, Doughboy, rented this particular beach house for over ten thousand dollars. Well, five over five thousand dollars a week for two weeks. That's not a, a fucking chump change there. And That's this is some what serious money. this is some serious money. This is what this guy serious had dope. to say. Yeah. This is what this guy had to say about his experience at a rental that I manage and clean. I'm so mad we can't show his picture for the pod. We're so but sorry, we're but we want to make sure that's all good. He's the softest man ever. He's yeah, imagine imagine a guy like who's like maybe sixty. He's who, not super fat. He's just just he's soft just in every soft. sense of the word. His, his, this his, guy is never face, his never mentality. chopped wood. He oh no, no 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 never no his hands are like you ever shake a guy's hand and it's like just the softest thing. Yeah, it's like imagine a baby's that, ass. but it's his face. It's just so soft. You yeah. know, like this guy uses Luberderm. On his face, which I've never heard of. Mm-hmm. It usually goes right to the dick. Right. You know, like, that's where that goes. You know, like, this is... He does, this... he does full... Bo- he actually dips himself in, like, um, he has the harness go down, and he just goes into the vat, full body, yep. uh, Luberderm CQ. Yep. After his stressful day of sitting on a desk. Yeah. I mean, this is the time he stressed guy. out. Yeah, so Brian's... I mean, he's got a stressful day of looking under couch. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hunting so... for... I think he might be a dust bunny hunter. Sorry, right. go ahead. So, so give, give us the review by Brian C. Brian C. rented a, a beach cottage on the East Coast, and he said, mm-hmm. Hello, here is a summary slash review. Slash of, review. Slash review. Couldn't pick which one he's going to do. Of my recent stay. This is a five-star house in a five-star location with a five-star price. So far, so good. So far, so good. So far, so good. <laughs> he even says it. <laughs> However... However, oh, dot dot dot. I do not think the entire experience was five star. For instance, oh. Brian, while what the happened, house Brian? was generally clean, the closets were a mess with supplies, additional blankets, towels, etc., haphazardly thrown in. Oh, haphazard. These were not only unorganized but prevented the full use of the closet space. What's the full use, by the way? <laughs> what do you get? Twenty five percent use. What's and the, the what's drawers, the, full use? the drawers and bureaus were the same. And if I could respond. I think we both say, Brian, you know, thanks for your stay. We appreciate everything. Uh, we didn't know you want to spend more time in the closets. <laughs> Brian, we didn't know. We didn't know. We are sorry that your, your, your you image want to be of $10,000 of rental of a, of a building was to make sure that you well optimize your time in the closets. Yeah. We'll make note of that. Um, for the future, if you come back, we'll make sure that you have the perfect closet to spend as much time as you want in. Mm-hmm. Because and when you go to the beach, there's you. nothing better than spending most of your time in the closet. Yeah. Um, it, it, to be fair, it doesn't look like he gets much sunlight. Ever. Not at all. Yeah, so he likes the closets. And then he likes things more than the closet, too. You sure. mentioned earlier. The outside shed for the beach equipment was pretty much the same. Very is and hard to find used things. Oh, no. so, so the things are Brian, in there. It's he's just, got, this he, guy likes cluttered. He likes things. He likes closets. He likes sheds. So, Brian... If you want to spend more time in the closets and sheds, we wish you have notified the owners mm-hmm. that this is where you want to be. We would have made them very we would open have made sure and organized for that you. That when you're there, you get to spend time in the closet and in the shed. Sure. And actually, it's funny because it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. Um, the review goes on. He said some areas, such as under the couch, were not, <laughs> <laughs> were not very tidy. Brian, and I Brian, to- Brian, Brian. <laughs> Anyway, the closet, all right. The shed, I don't know why you're out there, but under the couch, Brian. What are you doing under the couch? (laughs) You're spending 10 grand to hide under the fucking love seat? Yeah. We're not very tight, and I had to clean the floor myself as my grandson and I were playing there. Brian, we've heard it before. You want to spend more time under the couch with the grandson? (laughs) The tale is all this time. You Almost go on time. vacation, the grandson, you're both under the couch together, <laughs> rolling around, or the fuck you're doing. Well, that's how it goes. Dude, you have grandkids, which we don't. Uh, we're not old enough yet. No. But if you have grandkids, that's what you do. the first thing you do is go under the couch. That's what you do. You, you pop Spend the couch Spend time out. under the couch. If you love them, you will couch with them go under the under couch. the couch. So... We really, really feel bad that you cannot spend more time what in, the, like. in the closet, 
in the shed Beautiful and under the couch under with the your couch. grandson. We wish we wish that this was more of a consideration. I'm for devastated him. that I'm, he, you know ten thousand dollars, dude. All yeah. he wanted, all this guy wanted, was to be in the. Didn't closet, even ask for a refund, but he deserves it. In the shed, yeah. under the couch, I would give him the whole damn thing for free. Of course, said, hey, dude, we we made. Sure I didn't know that. I didn't know under the couch was dirty. That's fucking ridiculous. Well, some people like what they want. He wanted to be on the couch? I wish I knew that. I wish uh, I could make his experience better. I mean, better he paid for, for the whole rental, not just everything <laughs> but under the couch. That's, you know. You know, what is the meaning of life, you know? Like. Uh, I don't know, but he has, he's got to figure it out. He's, exactly. He's like, got to figure well, it out. Well, the meaning of life is a paradox. You'll never get to that answer. But for him, I but think But he's as close as I've ever seen. He knows seen. that he's spent the past 60 years striving for the moment to be under the couch with his grandson. Yeah. God <laughs> willing. That's all he wanted, and um, there so was also ask? there was also no face cloths, and he eventually found them in the oh aforementioned closet mess. He did find them, but it was so haphazard that he couldn't even find the thing. Couldn't yeah. even found them. There's no beach towels, a bunch of shit. The lawn beach was never towels. cut, um, and uh, a bunch of more shit. But I just no I, beach towels is new to me too. It's like if a place that you rent out should have towels to take a shower with. I don't know if they're beholden to, to provide you with towels that you're supposed to ruin on the beach. Yeah, I know that they're probably flying in or whatever, so it's like, oh, they need all the stuff there. But that's usually one of the things you buy when you get there or you bring with you. I never had any place I've ever stayed in provide me with beach, specifically beach towels no. that you take to the beach. They're supposed to have buckets and pails for the, your grandson, too? Or are those under the couch, too, Brian? I don't know. Yeah, we don't know what you're doing on the couch. But I don't if you, understand. If you want you. face towels and... Beach towels. Beach towels. Clean and, under the couch. Yeah, uh, stuff so you can have fun with your grandson on the couch... We'll make sure they're there. We're not judging. Request I mean, it beforehand. As, some, we'll, as someone, we'll oblige you. As someone who is the cleaner, who has cleaned up cum, period stains, mm-hmm. what you know, ice cream, whatever it is, maple syrup. Um, I'm, sure I'm not judgmental, and I never said, "Hey, uh, bad review. This person had sex in this room." I don't care. Nah, this no guy, judgment here, dude. You get you legally own this place for two weeks. If you want to fuck your if guys you, on the couch, that's up if, to you. If you exactly, if you want face towels. For under the couch, the grandson. That's I, fine. I, that's fine. Just, just let me know. Let me know. You know I'm let very him know. sorry. Um, Anyways, I feel so, bad. So thanks, Brian C. Um, I'm glad you think criticism. that our team is accommodative, and you want to make sure that we know these things so we can do things better. That's nice. Um, to make sure that we have a five star location with a five star place and a five star experience under the couch and yeah. in the shed and mm-hmm. in the drawers. Yeah, and the drawers too. Let's not forget drawers. that. Because th- th- here's the thing. I mean, like, no bullshit. No, no, trying to be funny. When no. Is, when is the last time you went to a hotel and said, I'm going to put my clothes in the fucking drawers? Who fucking does that? It's a, I know people do it, but I have never met one that does that. I've never met somebody. I mean, it, that just seems so fucking weird That's insane. To me. You, that means you're crazy. You're just living there for 24 hours putting your clothes in the drawers? What do you need the drawers for? Your drawers are going right back in the fucking bag. Dude, you know what I do when I go to a hotel? Well, let me ask you. What do you, when you, when you, so say you're going somewhere okay. and you stay in a hotel room, what do you do? Well, just give me the first 20 minutes. First thing I do, take my jacket off, put my bag down. What's well, the summer? You have a jacket on? Uh, oh, it's the summer? Okay. Don't yeah, take my, we, take my... this, Dude, this is Brian C. in the summer. I want to pretend that right, you're Right, okay. Him. Well, am I in a hotel or am I in the, the cottage? Uh, well, me and Joe have a history of trashing Airbnbs and getting the police called on us, so we're not going to do that. Let's just say it's a hotel. I don't know if that's true. We have, <laughs> we have had this happen a few times. Um, uh, it's a hotel. I put my bag down. I, um, I immediately jump on the bed and do the thing where you lay down and you're like, ah, oh, this is the bed. And then I get up, I look at the bathroom to see what's going on in there, what we got working with there. Then I start putting stuff in the fridge. And then I probably turn on the TV. That's my that's my ritual. First twenty minutes. Yeah, that's probably it. All right. And then I try. I really pick my phone because I try to figure out what I'm doing next. Because I'm not hanging out there for the next six hours. I'm doing whatever I'm there to do. Uh, what are we? Where are we going? What are we doing? What time's the thing? What time's dinner? Whatever we're doing. That's my thing. What about you? Um, thanks for asking, Joe. I appreciate you. Oh, back on me. Hey, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, a good question would be. These chairs are unreal. Um, we'll we'll get to that in a minute. Um, what do I do? Um. I have a history of traveling a lot for work and uh, sometimes for pleasure. Mm-hmm. As any red-blooded American man would. Yeah, exactly. So most of the time, it's most. I'm going to go about work, Dylan, real quick. Sure. Um, as opposed to pleasure. I know Brian, I don't know. He could have <clears> been there for work with his, with his grandson. <laughs> yeah. I doubt it. But I don't know. He you didn't, didn't explicitly say, say, say one way or the other. I get to a hotel room. First thing, they just make clothes off. 
I'm completely naked. Okay. Did you think I did that too? <laughs> you didn't say it. No. I'm asking if you thought that's what I was going to say when you asked me the question. I was hoping so because it's normal. Well, it's what you do. It's normal. So therefore, it's not normal because you do it. <laughs> I don't think it's weird, but it's definitely not normal. I don't care who I'm with. Clothes are off. Clothes are off. Clothes are off. All right, I love it. I'm Continue. completely naked in a hotel room. Imagine this. Yeah. If at this point, you probably know what I'm looking like if you're a first time listener. Um, if you're not, we'll describe it to you in gru- gruesome detail. If you're on Spotify, go on YouTube. You'll gorgeous, see what it'll brown like. eyes. Gorgeous, slight. Fluctuous tuft of hair. We'll work our way down. Work our way down. I've got really good uh, chest and arm muscles. Everything yep. below that is shit. That's so, not true either. He's gorgeous. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. Um, Great cock. <laughs> Joe knows. Um, Spalding so, need work. Yeah. Um, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm so you na- get fully nude. So I'm naked in a hotel room. Get in your birthday suit. Take off your suit. Immediately naked in the hotel room. First thing, first thing I do, sit on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> sit on the fucking thing. Yeah. I'm on the couch naked because I can't really do that anywhere else. I don't want to sit on my own couch naked. No, it's gross. I don't do that. It's gross. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you do it in hotels. Yeah, hotel couch because the beauty of the hotel couch. Is it forgets. It forgets. Right. <laughs> Wipes the memory. Clear all cookies. Clear history. <laughs> clear history. Clear the cash. Clear the cash. <laughs> clear the cash. Every time. The couch, it's not something that's cleaned, but it does forget everything immediately. <laughs> it doesn't tell anything. It, it tells no secrets. There's policy on the couch. Just don't ask. Don't tell. Don't tell. Nothing. <laughs> nah. I'm in Montana naked on a couch within five minutes <laughs> of me. Uh, Whatever happens under the couch stays <laughs> under the couch. Exactly. And it, yeah, I'm not under the couch though. No, I'm, I'm some people fully on the couch. Some people Loud like to. You. Some people <laughs> like to like roll to go, around under the couch. <laughs> they like to go under the couch with their grandson. <laughs> their grandson. <laughs> they like, like a, to go under the couch. The grandson. It's their prerogative. I'm not doing that. Okay. I don't know. I'm not that age. I don't know. Maybe I will be at that age. But Maybe one day I'll right be rolling now, around. Right now, I'm way. on the couch, naked above on the couch, mm-hmm. not under the couch. Fully spread eagle on the couch. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then I hang out for a bit on my phone, naked on the couch. Nice. And then, and then, then, like then, then, then I decide to get up and organize my clothes, which means that I okay. dump my entire suitcase on the floor. Well, I do not do this. And I then, try to keep as much in there the entire time as possible, always putting them back in every time. I have to dig through dirty clothes the whole time because every time I go take it off, I put it back in there. That way, I don't have to get all the shit at the end. But every time I have to get in the suitcase, I'm digging through all my dirty shit, and everything smells terrible. So it's a bad strategy. Yeah, no, it is. You're right. But I like to keep it all in one spot. That way I don't forget. Because the amount of times I forget shit in hotel rooms, even with that strategy, it's about uh, 50% of the time I, I lose something every time I go to a hotel room. Uh, really? I never lost a thing. Really? It's like whether it's like a, sh- a shirt or a, <clears throat> like, a, like a charger. I just feel like it's, a, it's an unfamiliar environment. And I don't put it in the same spots. So I've gotten better at it over the years. But when I was like, you know, a teenager into like young 20s, like I would always be forgetting shit because I'd just be grabbing shit and going. And it's all in different spots. It's not like your house. You're like, oh, my thing goes here. My thing goes here. Yeah. And I don't use the drawers because I'm not a psychopath. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm not psychotic. That's for Bibles. But you can't spell without hot. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's for Bibles. Yeah, you can't spell psychotic without hot. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. A, that is actually sort of a Everyone knows that's for where you keep the Bible with the gun cut out of it so you can end your own life in a motel room. Um, but I feel like I'm stepping on your thing here. So what do you do next? You dump them all out on the floor, all your clothes that you already packed on the floor immediately. Pull my gun Which we've already (laughs) pulled out my gun. I spin the barrel. Pull my gun out of the Bible. (laughs) And I play Duck Duck Goose with my teeth. (laughs) No, no, I don't. I don't pull my gun out of the Bible. No, no, no. Um, then, then, Then it's time to figure out what I'm going to eat. That's, so, step, that's step two. So I'm naked. Um, I'm on naked, the couch. hungry. My clothes are everywhere. My clothes are everywhere. I'm on the couch. I call room service. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't, no, dude. I said over dude, easy. I said I'm poor. I'm not doing room service for food. I order, well, I a, I order a pizza from the local pizza place. There you go. They bring it to the door. I put a towel on. Yeah, you're not a, you're not a monster. <laughs> I'm not a monster. Order a pizza. Eat the pizza naked on the bed now watching Family Guy. <laughs> this is a true story from Florida. I know it is. <laughs> I didn't touch it for a second. Yeah, um, and uh, I don't. I don't. Know. Maybe later I'll talk about some of the things that have been discussed and that I've done. But um, but right now, right now, the first five minutes. We talk about the first five minutes. Yeah. Naked in a hotel room, sitting on the couch, <laughs> watching Family Guy eating a pizza. Watching Family Guy eating pizza. That's how you. That's, that's how that's most how you're people supposed to do it. Go to 
hotel room. Most reasonable adults. That's how they handle that situation. They don't yeah. look in the closet. <laughs> they don't for look, a face cloth. They don't look under the couch. Like a fucking jerk off. <laughs> they don't go under the couch with their grandson. No. That's not they what sit on top of the couch naked. Yes. That's what you're supposed to do. Yes, of course. I'm not questioning what's under the couch. I'm not fucking... Honestly, dude, I'm not looking. I don't want to know. Honestly, it's none of your business. It's, it's none not. of your fucking business. It's none of your business. Leave it alone. Yeah. And one thing is, it just, just for Brian C., Dude, my friend. Dude, Brian. Dude, Brian. The Bri- fact face towels are really. You like, don't. You it don't just shows that. that you've never worked at a restaurant. Yeah. You've never worked at a grocery store clerk. You've never worked as a bagger. You've never worked as a door dasher. No. That if that face towel could talk. Ooh, what the tales it would tell. If that face towel could give birth. <laughs> <laughs> Which it almost can. At this point, it probably can, unless the bleach was involved. Yeah. You wouldn't be like, oh, luxury face towel. Good. That right face towel face. has been... You see what that thing's been through? Fucking... Good lord. Someone came in that face towel so hard that their <laughs> fucking ears rang. <laughs> <laughs> and you wouldn't probably use it. Blew it blew a hole through the back of the <laughs> thing. <laughs> exactly. There's a perfectly semicircle stuck to the wall with what used to be the towel. <laughs> like a roll of cheesecloth blasted on the wall yeah. with threads all over it. One guy. Brian. If that, yeah. If that face towel was locked into a frame, they would have blown the frame out of that face cloth. It would have shattered like glass. Shattered the whole thing. So, so Brian, so careful what you wish for. I guess for that's it. The, that's the, the whole thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like um, there's been some skits about like people who send food back at restaurants. Sure, it's a common fear people have. Don't fuck with people who manage your face cloths. Yeah, don't fuck with people who manage your food. It's a cliche for a reason. It's insane. Like you gotta be you gotta be realistic that like this is a real place full of strangers. Yes, if you want to rub a cum towel all over your face, Brian, there's places <laughs> for that. It's not this particular Airbnb. It's yeah, and you gotta you gotta be careful with that shit, dude. Like you mm-hmm. know, I'll make sure the closets have room for you to go in with your grandson next time you stay. But right now, let's let's move on to the monarchy. God save the queen. God save the queen. I guess a good spot for our first commercial break. Hope you break. enjoyed your break. Welcome back to the Dylan Joe Basement Podcast. Uh, we were just talking about uh, good old-fashioned Irish whiskey. Now, I have whiskey that's come from West Cork, the whiskey operation. Now, my ancestors are from Cork, which is in Southern Ireland. And we were just talking mm-hmm. about how if you have an Irish whiskey, it's pretty much going to be good. By the time it gets to you, it's had all these quality controls, and you have to be a certain amount of that. And you said, well, I mean, have you? I've never had like a you know, $80, $100 Irish whiskey. And I wouldn't have either, because I would never pay that much money for a whiskey, even though I do like it. But there was an occasion where I did have whiskey that was... 80 and a hundred dollars and crazy ass shit like that. It's a fucking weird story. It goes like this. I'm at Finnegan's Pub in Hudson, one of the old, old haunts. And Finnegan's is basically a dive bar that's dressed up like a silk hat on a pig. So you wouldn't think you'd go there for like nice fine whiskey. But because they are technically still an Irish pub, they have to have do. No whiskey shit. on tap. I never would have thought they had and they actually, shit, yeah. yeah, and they actually have a whiskey menu there if you ask for it. It's just whiskeys. So they have, like, you know, whatever it is. Like, Lagavulin and the Jameson 80 mm-hmm. cask and all this crazy shit. Yeah. It's a full menu of it. And I was out there one night by myself, as I used to often do when I lived uh, right down the street from there. And I met this dude, just chatting him up, whatever, talking about drinking. This dude was probably, I don't know, 280, maybe 250. Uh, pretty tall, big hulking dude, but fat. Fat strong, like one of those guys, like fat strong. Yeah, had the sleeves cut off. There's nothing better than that, cause like when you think of like um, sumo wrestlers versus yeah. a UFC fighter, no chance. It's a guarantee that sumo wrestler's gonna win. Mm-hmm. You can't. And plus, you're always down. playing with a weighted vest, cause all your life you're carrying around 400 pounds, so your muscle is just working. Well, exactly. So imagine like right now, you know, I'm, I'm 165. You know, if I was 365, oh, fuck. my arms automatically have 10 or 15 pounds more on them, so you're automatically just, it's from just from paddles. fucking living, Yeah, you're going to be stronger. Absolutely. And this guy looked like that kind of guy. If I remember correctly, he was wearing a backwards hat, and he might have been bald, but he had a goatee, and he had tattoos on his arms. And we got into talking for a while, 
And he brought up, he's like, hey, you ever tried, you know, the nice whiskeys here? I like to try some nice whiskey. And I was like, oh, no, man, God. Oh, I never buy anything like that. And he goes, no, no, no. I'll, 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 it's, on, it's on me. Let's it's on get one. Yeah. It's on me. And, and, I'm, and now I immediately I'm like, well, for my first thought is, this is not, I'm not going to have another chance to try nice whiskey like this. I'm never going to pay for this shit. Yeah. Why don't I go for it? But then I, then I immediately went to, into girl mind. And I go, wait a minute. Why is this guy buying me expensive whiskey? Right, bro. Am I going to have to jack this guy off over here? But I'm like, no, no, no. He seems like a kind of, you know, gruff, older guy. Like, he might probably be, even be homophobic. Who knows? Like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm just going to go with it. He might just be, you know, you know, cool guys, whatever, whatever. I'm just going to go for it. And Sometimes see you have to take a risk in life, Joe. And I did. It's one of those moments. And I said, let's go for it. And he goes, what one do you want? And I go, honestly, man, I'll take whatever. I appreciate you, you know, you're offering me, and I'll take whatever I can get. <laughs> so he picks this, you know, top shelf, whatever the fuck. I've never even seen the bottle before. Some kind of crazy. They had to get it out of, like, a box in the top of the bar and get a stool and everything. I'm like, oh boy, I don't need this often. They pour us out a couple of a couple of doses of that, and I, we start getting into it. I go, wow, this is quite good, as you would imagine. For yeah. you know, I don't know if it's eighty dollars over market price good, but it's better than average. There's something to it. Like those, I don't know if it's that when much you when better, you double but. or triple the price of what you're drinking as a Scotch drinker. Yeah. Um, there's not really any words to describe. Like, there's just something about this where you can just fucking tell. Yeah, it is better. I don't like I said. I don't know if it's four times better, but it's at least twice as good. You yeah. know, I guess you pay a little more. Anyways, I'm not paying for it. So he, we're getting into drinking this, and he's ordering. We had a couple of different kinds, and I'm and now I'm really getting nervous because we're starting to get into his life story. Turns out he had just gotten out of prison, not very long after we were talking there. Or maybe about a month, and he had been there for ten years, and he was looking to reconnect with his kids. That was the first thing on his mind. He hadn't right. talked to them in a while. Okay, yeah. Did he tell uh, you why he was in there? He did not. And I did not ask him. So 10 years could be armed robbery. It could be something that's... Yeah, I mean, it's not murder. Yeah, murder, not But it could years, be but... armed robbery. It could be, you know, attempted yeah, murder. So like 20... So like I, I, I follow one guy on TikTok who's awesome. This guy's really, really great and really um, forward-thinking and proactive and a smart guy who ended up doing 20 years in a Virginia prison because he... Um, uh, accidentally, he defended himself and shot and killed two people trying to kill him. Damn. So he had a gun, which was legal, whatever it was. But this is a nice, uh, educated guy. <coughs> God save the queen. You got <laughs> some, just like the, 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 that, like it could just be that. You know, yeah. like, he, uh, this, he, this he's, guy. He's, yeah, yeah, but I'm saying it wasn't. Years, it years. wasn't. I wasn't just trying to profile him. He was like, I was into some bad behavior. Like he was yeah, open yeah. about it. I don't remember if he straight up told me his charge, but he wasn't like it wasn't like a misunderstanding. Like he was fucking some people up and he had to pay for it. Yeah, yeah. And he had learned at least in his head. He learned a lot. Prison, prison is a real, real educational yeah. uh, environment. Like most of you guys who are in, like it's like oh he's a criminal, it's whatever. It's, those guys learn. Yeah, you got a lot of time they, to they, think. They, they have a lot of time to think. They have a lot of time to pay for their, like, quote-unquote sins and whatever it is. Right. And if they take it, so most hard things in life, they take it the, from what I've learned from people in prison, they come out, hopefully come out of there. Sometimes they come out and they just immediately just rob a bank again because they want to get back in. Yeah. A lot of times they learn, like, hey, there's more to life than this and there's, and I, I all they do, sometimes they, they, they graduate college in jail. They, they. Yeah learn things they learn a trade they whatever it is they grow from that experience it's unfortunate sure. you don't hopefully have to learn it that way yeah but, but maybe 10 years did. you know it's it's time where this guy would be someone you might actually trust because it's been a couple months since they've been in there you know it's and that is a gracious reading of it and i do think that way of it might now. not be the case but, but at like, the time i was a little bit nervous i now i'm three expensive whiskeys into this guy who's telling me he's been to prison and he wants to talk to his kids and I'm thinking there's a definite chance if I just walk away from the situation, he's going to follow me to the parking lot and say, didn't you forget something, redhead? And puts me on the ground <laughs> and lets me... <laughs> it can happen. And says, yes. It says, make an O, like, make an O face for me. Yeah, there Go like are, this. There are like, rules in jail and he might be blurring the lines I was, from Finnegan's the jail. Yeah, well, let's, say, let's put it this way. If I was in drinks. prison and he offered me an $80 whiskey, I wouldn't have taken it. You know? Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, it, I mean, it, it all ended up all cool. He was, he was a genuinely cool guy. I never saw him again, but uh, I always do wonder what happened to him and if he ever reconnected with his kids. And uh, that was a great experience to try an expensive Irish whiskey. I'll probably never do it again. Yeah, what did you think? It's good. It's good. It's good. And speaking of Irish whiskey, I'm talking about <laughs> empires that run the world. We're going to get into our monarch talk here. Um, we like to show you guys for a little bit. And I have a little list here I found on the World Wide Web of weird uh, monarch facts we could bop back and forth with each other and Let's see what we think them back about dude. it. Yeah, Some of these are boring as fuck, but, you know, we make we make do. We make rain while the sun shines. This one 
I mean, and this this woman in particular is very contentious in history because there's so many crazy stories about her. Some of them might be true, some of them might not be true. For example, this artwork probably doesn't look like her. They're good, though. But Cleopatra was the only member of her centuries-old dynasty to bother to learn Egyptian. And people don't know about Cleopatra that she was not an Egyptian woman. She was born in Egypt, and she was raised in Egypt. But part of the Ptolemy dynasty is an old vestige of Alexander the Great's rule of Egypt. She was Greek. She was a Greek lady. And, you know, the Ptolemy dynasty was brought up in Egypt, but the Ptolemy weren't that beautiful... Uh, dark complexion Cleopatra with the braids in her hair kind of shit. She was, you know, she was olive skin, darker skin, like Mediterranean, but she was, you know, as we say today, a white lady. And people get really mad about that. It's like... Wait, she was actually a white lady? Well, she was Greek. Greek I I always picture Aaliyah from Queen of Damned. That's what I think Cleopatra Yeah, well, that's me too. She's like a beautiful brown skinned woman with like the long hair and everything. But I mean, she wasn't like me. (laughs) <laughs> like that's gross no no but she was it, it Ptolemy dynasty it, it comes from the line of Alexander the Great and putting his generals and Ptolemy was one of his generals and he said okay you run Egypt now Alexandria Egypt was named after Alexander the you know the Great and so that dynasty was put in place way after all the pyramids way after all the actual Egyptians lived there Greece was basically still running shit around there yeah. and when Rome comes in to sweep that shit out and they show up it makes sense that they wouldn't have learned uh Egypt, Egyptian rather, because they're they're the, the rulers. They don't care. Have someone translate it for me. I'm not going to be part of this whole. No fucking shit. They never, they never were truly part of the culture because they just were, 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 like they were put in place there. Well, know? and we think so. Like you know, there's a lot of conspiracies and speculation on this, but of course, like the pyramids were built in 4000 BC. It could have been 40,000 BC, depending on who you talk to. Based sure, off but it was at least whatever. much. Cleopatra was like 10 BC or, or 60 BC or whatever. Like so, this is this is the time. Oh yeah, it was thousands Cleo- and thousands of years after. Cleopatra was around two thousand plus years ago. Two thousand and what uh, forty years ago, yeah. Cleopatra was walking around in her hot fucking. Uh, and she and she definitely and was stuff. sexy. We don't know yeah. if she was particularly hot by our American our American modern beauty yeah, standards I have a or wild whatever. Thought that she probably was. But she, there's a lot of stories of her. Um, getting shit done, including the time that she had herself wrapped up in a rug and delivered to Caesar's room when he was staying in Egypt. And she wasn't allowed to leave the palace. They wrapped her up in a rug. They unrolled her, unfurled the rug in his room. She was fully naked. And she was like, what's going on, big boy? Month later, he's helping her take back the entire capital. Well, that... She used his army to take back Egypt and, and got there in a sexy rug. I mean, the chick was definitely sexy. Dude, things before... Like she got shit done. Things before phones were fucking great. <laughs> All surprises. <laughs> There's no you up. Yeah, exactly. She just like, said, I'm going to deliver know, myself in a, a phone. rug. Like, what am I going to do? Like, you know, this is this is pre-phone time, you know? Caesar, like, you up? Let's do some shit. Feeling cute. Yep. Hey, hey guys. Might roll, you up in a rug later. Roll me up in a Persian fucking hot-ass wool rug. Deliver me to this guy. Fully nude. Fully naked. And I come out and I go, what's up? Like, and she nailed it. Nothing hard. He than that. he didn't owe her anything, and he's there on like a, like a, an envoy to talk about the Roman Empire. Where it was like we run the shit now, and she goes, "My brother and sister just kicked me out of there, but I think that you might have a good idea to kick it back." And he goes, "I like that." What a woman! What a gal! That's a woman, dude. Didn't he, didn't he, not her whole family even bothered to learn the language of the culture she was around? And she goes, "I'll learn it." She was fucking smart. Yep. That's it. Number one. This one's boring. Moving on to the next one. Um, when he was a prince, King Edward the First escaped prison by racing his guards. It goes like this. In the medieval world, it was common practice for knights and nobles to ransom high-born hostages in times of conflict. Like, I have your kid, you have my kid, let's make a deal here. Because that way you won't try to ransack my whole town. I can kill your son if you do that. It's a good, yeah. it's a good little bargaining chip. Yeah, it makes sense. Alex, that happened to Alexander when he was a kid too. That he got, you know, bargained off. They had to save him back. Same deal. Um, it was Caesar actually. I'm thinking of. But anyways, one of those guys. Anyways, the future king Edward the First, who was a prince at the time, was taken hostage when he was still a prince during the Second Baron's War. Whatever. Edward proved an escape artist when he found a clever way out of captivity. He challenged his captors to a series of races. I like how there are... I actually have heard this story, now I'm reading it. Horse races. You know, he's having fun. Let's race around the horses. 
He challenged his captors to series races using a fresh set of horses every time. Two new horses. Race again. Horse retired. Let's go again. By the time he got to the final pair of horses, Edward saw his chance. He escaped confinement by outriding his captors since their horses were exhausted and couldn't keep up. He had the last horse that wasn't tired and he just rode off to freedom. The equivalent of race of drag racing the cops until they run out of gas and then you fly away on the last cruiser. Fucking love it, dude. Rode his whole way off. <clears throat> Dude, before cars, before cell phones, people knew what was going on. I love how the whole time they're like, oh, we're just having fun here. Meanwhile, he's like, these fucking morons. I'm going to race their asses out of here in like 10 seconds. And they let him out, you know? It's, it's great. Ra- raced off. <clears throat> uh, yeah, another couple of good ones Keep here. Keep them coming, dude. Yeah. You got it. Um, a lifelong smoker, King George V, who had been ruling the United Kingdom which is one of our royal line we talked about today in Her Majesty's Royal Service, since 1910. So this is you know, around the time World War One's about to be popping off pretty War soon. War One's popping off? And he, because he smoked his whole life, he developed lung disease. It got so bad... One moment. <laughs> it got so bad, the king needed doses of oxygen to catch his breath, which must have been pretty hard to come by in 1910. Yeah, how do you synthesize oxygen in 1910? They might have still had tanks to, for, like, laboratories <clears throat> and Bunsen burners and shit, but it was probably, like, so hard to actually uh, accomplish. That accomplish time. that and store it and whatever it is and compress it. Yeah, it's way thing. easier now with mass production and all yeah, that yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 But even then, there's still shortages. I mean, it's Well, it's you have to be a to... king to get it, I imagine. Yeah. I yeah. guess you are. Uh, his condition worsened in January 1936, so he was the king during the entire World War One into World War Two into the Blitz of, of London, right? When was that? Is that that's not was the, the 40s, Blitz? was it? Yeah, when was the that? This was the 40s. Okay, so this is 1936, so it was just before um, anything started happening. Yeah. So like, they, they didn't they invade Poland in 35, 39, 39. Oh, so we're, this is it's not, not happened yet. Yeah, but in, we're on in, the cusp. No, but even before that, they uh, the the Nazis invaded, um, took over. Um, Czechoslovakia? Yes. Yeah, that would have been 38, 37. Okay, so we're about, we're about a year and, and a half, they, two but years away. Czechoslovakia, they, they just walked in. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a, a They had a parade and shit. Yeah, exactly. They they Basically, they gave up and said, yeah, we're not going to fight you guys. Um, but they fought back, you know, eventually. Yeah, so his condition worsened to the point where it was clear he wasn't going to survive. So George's wife urged the king's physician. This is King George II? Uh, king George V. Okay, yep. Um... And uh, she urged the king's physician to, to end her husband's suffering. According to the makers of a recent documentary, that, okay, well, I don't like to read shit like that. What the hell does that mean? Recent documentary? I want fucking primary sources on here. That's right, yeah. Anyways, what they said, well, this is Dylan Joe Baseball, guys, who cares? He said they, he administered the king a high dose cocktail of morphine and cocaine. What Basically, a, a nice uh, little way out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And off he went into Wonderland. Off he goes. Uh, the king is dead. Uh, long live the king. And I actually don't know who came after that, but I will look that up during a break. So be I do. Is King William? Uh, no, no. Sorry, it wasn't King King George V was the. He just the, died. He died in 1936. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. So, so who um, came next? I do have. So I, I hate to fucking do this, but King George the the not the original King George because it wasn't funny. Yeah. But <clears throat> King George the second, which didn't really say, um, he's that's the first King George. Yes, so I've got the second one down. I want to talk about him for a second. I don't know his dates because it's not telling me right here. Sure. Um, but he died really funny. Oh, I have a, I have a whole list of funny deaths. Why don't you get us started right me there? Me too. I, I just want to talk about King George as a as Dylan George Reed, of course, um, who is who is majority English, Irish, Scottish, majority, majority over fifty percent, George. King George II is notable for being the last British monarch to be born outside the borders of Britain, as well as being... Was he born in France? Because a lot uh, of them were born in France. Uh, it doesn't say, but I want to take an assumption and say yes. Yeah. Um, but One of is... the kings only spent a year in England, and, uh, and he was king for ten years of England the whole time he was in France. He was That's like, I'm the king great. there, but I'm not going over I'm there. I'm not going over there. It's fucked up. Um... So he was born outside Britain as well, and he was also known for having enough mistresses to cosplay as thirty pimps. What the fuck? I'm not sure what that means. Um, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, it makes some sense. I mean, he should just say he's a pimp for so, thirty people. Exactly. So you would think that he would die of super chlamydia or something. Well, 
unless we know from the podcast, if you remember this, chlamydia is one of the only diseases that originated from the Americas. Chlamydia did not exist in Europe until um, people went to America, got it. Well, they were. Back. This is how this was going on. We're we're talking a time where this this could be happening. Okay. And just for those who don't know what chlamydia is or who have never had it. Um, they call it the clap. Yeah. But not because it's kind of short for chlamydia. No. It's because they took your penis in a book, slammed that thing shut to try to slam the chlamydia out of your dick. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Um, it hurts, I might imagine. But that's not how he died. Um, you would think that, but no. Because he was a, he was like a, he was just some dude who was like, I'm going to fucking just have sex with everyone constantly. Someone who's having sex with probably like three to six chicks a day. The, he well, died you know, at 76, um, and uh, <clears throat> he died, his heart exploded due to extreme physical exertion, which isn't... And it wasn't f- fucking. It wasn't. Wow. It's funnier, because it's not funny <laughs> until you realize that the trauma that killed him was actually caused by him trying to take an enormous shit. Oh my god, hell yeah. His body simply sees the function. Let's see if I can remember the, the picture so, that we had with, with you shit off the side of the castle and a fall down. Oh my down god, like bring stories. that up right now. And he's just that's, that's shitting and just, he's, <gasps> Yeah, so you have a castle and it has this little like hut that's built in the yeah, outside and they and shit down. It down like 10 so stories. So you're like, oh, we're going to visit the king. And you, just, you go up to the castle and you go, it's beautiful. And there's just shit dropping <laughs> off the side. And in other words, um, his body opted to give up rather than finish his morning poop. That is a that definitely delicate British so way to put. He, was, he shot himself. He today. was taking a shit and it was too crazy because he's probably just eating like raw turkey bones, like you see yeah. at King Richard's Fair. They don't really. And he was trying to take a shit. Focus on and health. He, he died taking a shit that was trying. He was trying yeah. to take a shit too much. Oh my uh, god, that reminds me of a story that I heard shit. this week. And this is one's viewer discretion advised for all of our folks here. So if you don't this want, this is not a. Uh, if you don't want to hear the story, skip ahead three minutes. This is an eighteen plus podcast yeah. due to the uh, it's graphic content. Um, but this one is a story. A dude, it's one of those like TikTok videos where someone just tells a story in like two minutes, and the guy tells the story. He's so fucking nonchalant. He's probably like sixty years old, so he's been <clears> he's been around the block. But he says when I was like, when I was like a teenager, my dad had a body removal service. That the funeral homes would hire him or people would call him and they'd go remove the body from the place they passed away and he'd bring it to the funeral home so that they didn't have to like that's not their job to go pick it up you know they'd do that yeah. so this is all they'd do they just pick up and they would do it to any situation whether it was like a, a, you know a death in a, a murder or whatever a, a regular death or whatever yeah, yeah exactly so they get they get a call where this guy was checking on his neighbor next door they used to check on him and he, he hadn't he hadn't been outside in like a week and he was afraid that the guy was something was wrong because he wasn't answering his door. He was hard of hearing, so he knocked on a day, like day two, day three, still wasn't answering. By a week, he's like, "All right, I'm going in because I'm afraid something happened to him or something." He walks into the house, immediately hits the smell hits him like any great murder story or whatever. Um, but the guy wasn't murdered. He looks all over the house, whatever his name is, Eddie, 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 are you here? Eddie, here, Eddie, everything okay? And, he, and he, he walks all over the house, can't find him anywhere. He go, and there's no signs of any break-in. There's no signs of him leaving. His mail's been piling up. His car's still there. He goes into the turlet. Poor Eddie. He's dead on the turlet. Ooh. You know, he, he yeah, died. Dead on the toilet. Dead, you know, he died Elvis style, like a king. Yeah. It's another king, Elvis. And uh, so they call <laughs> in the extraction experts. This guy's probably like 16, 17 at the time. Goes in with his dad. And his dad's like, you know, it's going to be rough. But, you know, you grow up fast. He go into the bathroom and then Eddie's on the toilet and he's, he's haunched over and it said he looked he looked like emaciated like his whole body was like skinny as hell like all bone like he had been there and it's just like Larry Staley unfortunately from Allison Chains like that also emaciated Allison Chains shit. he was uh, you know he was a drug addict and he died at like ninety pounds yeah that's because brutal. of that type of is that type of stuff yeah exactly so cheers to Lane dude we're we're right. huge Lane fans course yeah he's a good so, guy. Um, good guy so they're like all right let's get him off the turlet and then we'll uh we'll uh bring him into the car and have not to the funeral home so they they go and they go they go, get one arm i'll get the other arm and they pick up and go heave ho he's not budging what the hell is going off on the here? toilet he's not budging they, they, the they can't get him up and they're, they're stuck and they go i go all right we didn't get a good grip on oh him God, why don't we get a good grip on him we're gonna get another another hand on him and they're gonna i mean really pull this time really stand up and they go 
and I'm pulling him up, and the guy's telling the story, and he's like, this guy might have been like 80 pounds soaking wet. Me and my dad are pretty strong. We can't get him off the toilet. We're like, what the fuck's going on here? Oh, God. And, so gross. And and they go for the third time. They, they, they fucking put their legs up on their bathtub, and they fucking heave-ho, and they pop him off that thing. He was sealed in like a suction cup by his ball sack. All wow. the fluids in his body had seeped in, and his balls stretched out so much, they made a perfect vacuum seal on the inside of the toilet bowl and his thighs, and they had <laughs> swollen up. He said it was about the size of a volleyball, and and they just sucked it in, and he just had all his entire body weight went to his balls, and he got stuck on the toilet, and it was probably quite a scene picking him up there. So, dying on the toilet sounds glorious, sounds, it's you know, not. luxurious, but uh, you don't want to die on the toilet. Yeah, that all that that dude did scrap. That's a bad way to go, more than ways than one. Yikes! I mean, he doesn't give a shit because he's dead. But like, no, he tried to give a shit. Yeah, uh, he did. Yeah, he, <laughs> he certainly did. Wow, what a bummer! <laughs> that guy had big balls. <laughs> big. He died of, and his balls kept him sucked in the toe. That is a mess. Oh man, the queen is gonna be really happy about this tribute that we've had for her on this podcast today. Well, the reason we're we're doing this is because. We care. We care. But respect the queen. We get it. But there's the reason. So the thing is, like, we're not fighting the fact that the people who stand with the queen and the monarchy or whatever it is are a little bit in the clouds. You know what I mean? Yeah. They also are. Um, there's so when Angelina much... Jolie gets married, they, they have, like, a happy day for themselves. They're like, oh, my God, this person that I like who's, like, famous, I love them. Yeah. And I'm happy for them. And they don't affect my life at all. And in fact, they don't care about me at all. And they would love to step on me if they gave them the chance. But this person is very famous. I care about them. And all their public image is like lovely and wonderful. Yeah. And the queen, by all accounts, was a nice and lovely lady. And all this other thing. So, you know, it, she yeah. didn't deserve to die at the age of 127 when she died. <laughs> yeah. We're not negative people. but no. like, Well, I mean, sometimes. But, like, no. the thing is, it's like there's so much suffering going on in the world and these type of things. Truly. And all of a sudden you show up. You show up it's, it's a classic thing. We all know a lot of people who went to um, uh, other countries that are suffering, third world countries. Yeah. And they hold a shovel and with a bunch of poor kids and take a picture of me helping. You're not fucking yeah. helping. And they go right back after the You're picture. You're not helping. Yeah. Now some of these people are given their resources to feed you yeah. while you take a picture with a shovel saying you're helping. You're not. Yeah. The 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 monarchy. But it makes for a good public image of what you're doing. It does, and it's like the only then they the only reason that these people exist are to just keep them alive. But the dollar amount per day to keep these people alive just for the fact that they're quote unquote royalty, which um, for example, I think right now in. Uh, I want to say Norway. Um, they have due to twenty three and Me and that type of service. Mm -hmm. There's like ten plus living relatives of Otzi the Iceman, the guy who they found in the iceberg. And Forty thousand year old guy. Wow. Fucking. So the guy did get laid while alive. He was slaying, dude. Nice. That guy was not just like a little dude. Whatever it is this guy was getting it going. When he was alive, he was red hot. He was red hot. He was full mast. Only in death did he become did he turgid become and ice little cold. tiny little. He was like this when they found him. You know, no, he was slain. You yeah. know, and like maybe we should give some patronage to if that's a word patronage, to Otzi yeah. the Iceman. You know, like but now now give we have ups, like big ups. Queen Elizabeth. She's they're just trying to keep this like social construct is what it is of mm -hmm. royalty yeah. when they don't actually have really a whole lot of influence on anything besides like they do this it's all public PR shit it's all PR shit and yeah. it's just millions and billions of dollars probably billions of dollars I mean for I, sure billions for sure and their assets are beyond that assets are insane they rule countries or whatever it is for someone to because govern. their great grandfather banged somebody and their great grandmother gave birth they are allowed to wear funny new hats every day of their life and be rich. It's like when Donald That's Trump... That's all it is. It's like when Donald Trump got COVID. You know, he got... Oh, yeah, yeah, COVID was no problem, whatever it was. It's like, dude, because you had... The best treatment possible. The best treatment possible. Yeah. And and then you're telling, oh, COVID's a joke, or whatever it is. It's like, that's right. that's what happened here. It's and he same... had a similar upbringing in the way that his dad and his mom, you know, gave birth to him. But it, even... Not to give any credit to that piece of shit, but even then, he still had to win an election. Yeah. No one elects the queen. 
No, you're born. You literally are born into Someone it. Someone dies, you're now that. You get it. Ever right. since you're alive, I love the fact that the royals are like, I should be the king. It's like, you're already the prince of fucking whatever. You're already done. Yeah, it's it. You're good. And there's no, there's no point. It's not, no it's one not else like, even getting close to that. Me and Joe were talking about today, like the movie Excalibur. Yeah. You know, we want to see it. We haven't seen it. If you've seen this, please. Arthur wasn't born to being king. Right. You had to earn it. So right, right in the comments, we, we're, we're excited to see this. Maybe we'll watch it tonight. We'll see what happens. But like, there was, there's so much trial by blood for like those times when King Arthur was around where it was sword fighting and these type of things. The fucking and Romans were trying to take over the whole country. Exactly, and they took a lot of it. They, there's, there's. If you go they into good anywhere piece. in the EU today, there are Roman. Uh, you, you can know, tell because there's roads there, and the fucking bridge people take. Exactly. Build roads. Yeah. Exactly. So like, they still have aqueducts stuff, there so from like you know when the Romans were ruling over Britain. And all of a sudden, someone's like, "Hey, I'm gonna build an addition to my house. We have to level the ground. They find mosaics under their yeah their from earth, the Roman from Rome. the Romans. Yeah, it's insane. It's mm -hmm. totally insane. This is and the thing is, it's 2022. This is the world we live in right now. So like this is we live a, in a society. We live in a society that is that has a that has a that has a hierarchy, mm -hmm. and one person who is of the blood from that goes back thousands of years. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to like it. Just this this tradition. It's a tradition. Really. It is a tradition. It's a traditional thing. Yeah. And it's like it's tradition is basically all it is. Yeah, and they 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 you know it's it's the old classic thing where like you know you look at all these movies of like the all the movies that show like the Black Plague and stuff like that. Yeah. The, 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 the rich people like walk over all these dead people you know to get to where they're not going. like today where they really get their hands dirty and all <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly it's all the same but it's all it's all a bunch of bullshit it's like this crazy thing that's why everyone's so like the memes are so funny because it, because it comes from a place of pain it does and I know it's like oh well, don't make fun of the old lady who died or their family's going through shit of course they are but you know who else is going through shit like that Every single person on planet Earth every day who doesn't have Buckingham Palace as their personal playground. Get yeah. Which is now Get it, which has now been taken over I saw on the internet by Spirit Halloween. Is it already? They're oh. so damn fast. They <laughs> God, go, they're they, just as soon as they close, they go right in there. Yeah, if you're a circuit city, if you're mm. a Marshalls that was moved, yeah, borders. if you're a yeah, borders, yeah, yeah. uh Barnes Noble, sure. Spirit Halloween. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. They just, sneak right in it. And it is, it is the season. It's about time. It's the season, dude. We're, oh, they're we're going to make a killing I don't know there. what the season is right now. I think it's Victorian ghosts. Oh, yeah. That's gonna be, oh, to be man, it's perfect. Buckingham Palace is going to have thousands of ghosts. It's going to be great. You know how many heads were rolling over there? Yeah. That's history. Yep. God damn. Yep. And um, it's, uh, you know, nepotism at its finest all of a sudden. I mean, it's the definition of nepotism. It is the actually the definition of it. Now, all of a sudden, we as Americans think like, Oh well, my vice president of sales hired his brother to be, you know, senior VP of fucking yeah, marketing. Hired? How about they never get hired? They just, just are that. All of a sudden, you're in. When your boss dies, your boss's kid is automatically your boss, and you never become the boss because you're mm -hmm. not the boss's kid ever. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm not anti nepotism. I have been. I've seen it in action working for corporations. Yeah, it's a little shitty, but it also is. It's human nature. Yeah, well, I'm. I'm against it. Um, until it benefits me, much like everybody else in the fucking right. world. Right. You know, it sucks until it doesn't suck. Well, like here's the thing: is that you can uh, you can put in rules to eliminate that and give fair opportunities for employment. Um, and they do have it, so it's like you have to consider they, all your options. But then ultimately, you still get to say, "Oh, they weren't qualified. I'm picking my son." But also, what's better than like, "Hey, my uncle hooked me up with a job." It's the best. That's how I got a job at the water department in Marlboro. Uh, I got a lot of jobs like that. You know, I don't have mine right now, but, like, that's not a bad thing either, sure. but it's not a good thing, but it's also, you know, like, so it's, you know. it's complex, but it's it's one of those things where it's, like, back to the meaning of life. If you're searching for it, you are trying to do, be better, mm -hmm. and the answer is, so I keep saying paradox. It's not the word. There's a word for this. If you want to look for the meaning of life, it's not like, oh, here it is. Mm. This is the meaning of life. Because if that was the case, then everything becomes black and white. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you are now even more of a robot than you thought you were in working world. It's ethereal, or like it's unreachable. Yeah, it's unreachable. So it's like, you know, you d if you searching for it is the is the purpose. Yeah. There's no end goal. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's th everything in life is kind of like that, you know, like... People kind of treat science that way, too, where it's like, if you can't get the answer to everything, then what's the point? It's like, well, the point is to keep looking, and then yeah. the, the looking of it... And I, I think about that too. Like, where are we going to hit the wall where you find out all of it? It's like reading a whole book. Like, we're we going to get to the end of this thing. It's like the more we look, the more we don't know. It's like, yeah, yeah but that's maybe that's 
what it is. The more you know, the more you the no more you know you don't know. The more the smartest people learn that they're the more they know, the more they don't know, which yeah. is exactly what you just said. Right. And I I, I appreciate that because that's been my. If I'm, we're both thirty. Yes. My entire twenties was spent trying to figure this out. Yeah. And all it did was lead to more questions. There's no there's no end to them. There's no end, and that's that's that is it. And like logically in my head I'm like there is an end there is answers and you can reach them but then as soon as you get there there's a whole other it's like every time you make it over a hill there's 20 more hills that's never mm-hmm. ending so it's not really you can't make it about getting to the end of the hill because there is no end of the hill no, so you, you better you better have fun climbing the hills yeah you're just a monkey in the middle of space and you've got a yeah. finite amount of time it yeah. ends with death and this is what it is so have a fucking great time. You can spend spend searching for it is good, yeah. But don't make that like everything. It's like no, just have a fucking good time. True. So when it comes back to the monarchy, it's like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> Basement podcast in another episode that we're privileged to have in a physical basement. We um, have the complete privilege of living in a basement together right now. We sure do. And this is a basement that has a lot of history. A lot of history. A lot of virginities were taken in this basement. <laughs> <laughs> Not mine, but mine. Uh, mine. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it could have been, but I didn't get it. It done. was taken for me right over there. I promise. This is a fact. This is where it was. This is where it well went down. I'm so happy about that. What a time, you know. I'm sure maybe others. You know, we don't know. There's a lot of people here. Well, there's been a lot of fluids spilled in this room, and they haven't all been fun ones. I know is, that. That is fact. true. Yep. This is the sticky floor of the I sticky mean, times. Either beer or uh, wild cherry Pepsi or uh, Sobe. Or oh, elixir. Some Sobeys, dude. Sure. Do you guys remember Sobeys? Fuck yeah, dude. I remember Sobeys. Dude, I think right now you can't even... I've never seen a glass Sobe bottle. They stopped making them. What the fuck They is only that make plastic them? ones now, yeah. Did the monarchy, like, say that this is... Yeah, the, the king of... They put so, in the orders. sobriety, the Sobe king. Sobe king. Yeah, the, the nation of sobriety said, we are going to make them plastic because glass is dangerous. Or They said some bullshit, which basically meant we want to save money and we're going to make smaller bottles and make them plastic. So how are the children of our future supposed to make bongs out of them? Yeah, because... And weed smoking devices. Yeah. Because how else are you going to smoke weed... They even had the little notch in them. The notch, dude. Where you would knock it in and it'd be a little hole. I you mean, can take a, a metal tap and you can do a little tap and right all of a sudden you get that in there. You get a gravity bong real quick. And there you go. Um, so how do the kids are supposed to smoke plastic and then get cancer? It's horrible. That's terrible to have kids go through that. That's terrible. And, uh, you know, I don't even know. We're drinking Founders All Day IPA right now, me and Joe. Um, you know, it's the unofficial beer of the podcast. Uh, sorry, we're in town, but it really, it, is. it really is. Yeah, yeah, it is. We, we, we always. This is the one that always stays around. It's the old standby. But, you know, I probably would still be drinking this, but I probably would still have a glass Sobe if I could. I mean, that was. I would rather have a glass Sobe right now. Right now, I could use a glass Sobe. That was. We were just talking about at Labor Day party. We brought up a conversation. It's my idea. Obviously, I'm a genius, and I don't know how to run a conversation perfectly. You heard it here first. Mm-hmm. I brought up the idea of uh, death row meals. What are you going to have for your last meal? Yeah, We're not yeah. going to get into that right now. No, no, we don't yeah, have time yeah, for that. Sure. But we are talking about death. I picked the Sobe Orange Carrot Elixir because oh they don't make God, it anymore. Dude. Are you sh- they don't not even it? in plastic bottles they don't make what it anymore. Fuck? I ordered a case of it like three years ago and it was the last case. Like They were like, you're never going to order it again. And it was old when I got it. Like It was probably like months old. But I was dude. like, I'm, I'm fucking drinking it. Best <clears> month of drinking... Uh, delicious food ever. I mean, delicious drinks ever. Dude. Couldn't, I mean, I, I miss no, it now. I, honestly, dude. I'm I, looking I, for a recipe I, online. I'm making myself now. I've wondered why reality has felt a little bit different since COVID, and I think it's because... It's be, it, no, it's because the CERN, uh, it started the, the well, Mandela. CERN, yeah, CERN. The CERN's, Mandela uh, dimension CERN's that we all live CERN, in now. CERN, Mandela, obviously a problem. If things feel different in your life, it's because of that, not because of anything that you have going on in your life. So, Sobe, for those of you who don't know, which you probably... If you're on this podcast, you probably do. So um, be it. Sobe had the orange carrot. 
they had the coconut one. And the they Liz had jizz. the strawberry one and the Liz Jizz, which was oh. the was that the green tea? That was the wh- all white. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the coconut one. It was literally Liz Jizz. Liz Jizz, yeah. yeah. And then so you had green tea, Liz Jizz. Mm. Uh, the, the there was the, a dragon fruit the pink one. one. The pink I like that one. The pink one. The pink one was a strawberry. Strawberry. One. Yeah. Yep. And then um, they had the orange it was, carrot. It had the, the blood red one, which is the dragon fruit one, which I love too. Yeah, I never went down that road, dude. <sighs> I was more of a like I go to Subway. You like the creamy. I ones. got the 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 fucking I like the jizz, the nice creamy oh, creamsicle man. one. Dude, what a goddamn bummer, man. So be you and Jeff love that creamy fucking milk. Fucking creamy Liz jizz, dude. That was so goddamn good. It was red insane. All over. You crack that top, it made a cracky sound. And metal cap, too. Metal cap. Fucking plastic. Better for the environment, dude. You know, you worry about the turtles. Bring the fucking glass Sobe bottles back, you heathens. Yeah, that was that was one of those things that like brings you right back to feeling alive. It was Snap fucking back. great. And speaking of about feeling yeah, alive, yeah. we're going to talk about feeling dead here. Speaking of our uh, past royal majesty... <laughs> <laughs> passed on. We had passed royal majesty. We would like to uh, talk about some famous monarchs who might have passed away in a way that was unconventional. They lived unconventionally. They died unconventionally. My first one on the list is named, and forgive me uh, all of our viewers in uh, Hong Kong, because I know the People's Republic of China is not allowed to watch our podcast because they're banned on YouTube. But That's- as we've looked at who does watch our podcast... We have gotten at least 26 different countries. That's pretty good. Dude, we're getting good, man. We, we got some stuff. That's pretty good. And, that's um, bad for the mic we did that, but that's pretty good. It is, but we've, we, the, like, when you look at the, like, the, the map of, like, who is listening to our podcast It's anytime, pretty fun to look at, like, it's someone up. in fucking, you know, some Dude, a lot, lot, lot of pretty much any EU, we might have had one Asia. Um, and it's, I had a lot of Ireland and Belgium. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so it's it's coming up, you know. We're preaching out to you there, my brothers. Yeah, we thank you guys. I mean, it's, it's thank all you guys out there. It's huge. And I'm sorry that you can't. Uh, all everyone who's listening on Spotify, we're on YouTube too, and it looks pretty. It's live. Anyway, his name is King King Shi Huangdi. He was the emperor of <coughs> China back some years ago, and his whole deal was that he wanted to live forever, be the God King Emperor for life, and that included putting all his sorcerers and apothecaries and doctors on the mission find me the elixir of immortality and they tried you name it every chemical on the globe they tried you know silkworm eggs they tried ginseng they tried every fucking thing much like Ponce de Leon much like Ponce de Leon instead of having a fountain they wanted him to drink it himself and they came up with mercury a beautiful silver liquid that shines like like a beautiful diamond in the sky and uh, the, the emperor started drinking these mercury concoctions, and they thought, this is going pretty good um, as far as that goes. And uh, that didn't last very long, if you can imagine. Drinking yeah, mercury, mercury doesn't good. do you very well. So, in a, some weird a twist of dramatic irony, the emperor of China, who is obsessed with immortality, killed himself. By trying to no drink way. the immortal you me? potion. He, he died. Holy shit, dude. He drank too much mercury and died. And they were like, how could this have happened? Oh my god. <laughs> how could this he have happened? He found this like, oh. silverly, silver elixir of thing that stays... I mean, that, it does seem a metal. It's a metal at liquid at room temperature. Liquid at room temperature. I mean, yeah, that seems amazing. magic to me. It is. Yeah, it is magic. So, um, that makes me think... I mean, to, not to go off topic for a second, but like I did learn this over the past like couple of years, and I want to make a PSA. Please about this so please essay i eat a lot of fish Mm -hmm. and um all of a sudden you 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 learn like you know don't eat a lot of fish as uh system of down once said don't eat the fish Eat the fish run knock them up yep so um they uh the reason that you shouldn't eat a lot of fish is because of mercury right and they absorb a lot of it in their body they do but take it do you know where the mercury comes from um, this wasn't the case. Uh, no, it's a modern hundred or two hundred years ago. Yeah, I don't know. Let's say a hundred years ago was probably a problem. Two hundred years ago was not a problem. Yeah, it's no. because of the industrial re- industrial revolution is the problem. Industrial revolution is the cause of nearly all pollution. All pollution, if not one hundred percent of it. Yeah, but so like when you go when you and you're like, oh hey, salmon doesn't absorb as much mercury as, as tuna haddock or tuna. Sure. Exactly. No tuna has a lot. Yeah. Big flesh. The ones that have the bigger the fish, the more mercury they absorb because they're long, longer. It's a cliche for a reason. Yeah, but the mercury comes from fucking boats, dude. 
boats. like boats dump their exhausts in the ocean and then also airplanes all the you know it's a, it's a byproduct of of petroleum wow. like mercury so, is yeah so there's always a little bit of mercury in the production it's so like uh it will probably mostly like coal it comes from gasoline too and whatever there's always a little bit of it there but like you know, uh, coal, nuclear power is by far the most clean. It's the cleanest by a billion percent. It seems percent. counterintuitive, but, but it's consider the, by what, far yeah. the best. Because because nuclear power plants heat up steam, they spin turbines, whatever it is. Yeah. It's a it's an, a perpetual process. And of course, there but, are byproducts we don't just dump in the ocean because that would be detrimental. But mm-hmm. other coal burns and they dump it in the ocean and, and it goes up in the atmosphere that. and then it falls back down in the rain. Yeah, goes in the ocean. You can't see it initially. And fish are swimming and they absorb that mercury. It's yeah. like it's such a small amount. Um, but it's a large amount. This is this is millions of tons. Yeah, because when they absorb it, it doesn't go through their system and then shit it yeah, out. Piss it out. Yeah, yeah. They keep absorbing it over and over again. So it by the time into, you it goes into, into their them, flesh and their muscles and whatever, so you eat mercury it. Going so on so anyone who thinks like, oh, t- tuna has more mercury because it's tuna. No, tuna absorbs more mercury from pollution. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, it's insane. So don't blame you're, the you're tuna. Funny. Don't blame the goddamn tuna because tuna are fucking sick as shit. They're fucking. They're the chicken awesome. of the sea badass they are that you're gonna see and they're badass fish so your buddy here king what king uh, abdullah the no 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 think about chinese oh chinese, chinese. chinese. sorry so uh king chi huang di okay q i dong let's call him uh emperor huang di emperor huang di um he just like led just like you know, other things that they thought was like the elixir to people drink arsenic for the same reason. Issues, yeah, exactly. I lead, mean, it's exciting chemicals. They used to put lead shit. in tea, dude. Like all of a sudden, you're yeah. like, oh, you can go to Europe and have go to a, um, uh, you know, little hut and have not hut, but like a like a basically a a, basically Starbucks and have yeah. tea and they'd add lead. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Fucking add lead, dude, because it's gonna it's gonna soothe your stomach or whatever. That's it's, so great. I got my it's tea the same unleaded. Thing with mercury, yeah, exactly. I don't want my stomach knocking as I hit 50 miles per hour. There you go. Yep. Your boy knows something about cars. He sure does. And airplanes. Worst just pollution so you in, know, in history. Just so you know. Hmm? Cessnas and stuff like that. Because we did a podcast on Bermuda Triangle with Cessnas and stuff. Bermuda they Triangle. still, a lot of them use leaded gasoline. That's bad. Which is why if you live in a city and you, and you want to plant vegetables, test your soil. Because for a, a good couple of decades... Cars use leaded gasoline to prevent knocking. For to prevent knocking. Because it lubricates things better. Yeah. And that actually, looking back, and I'll get off this topic real quick. So we're yeah, yeah monarchs, okay. we're talking about that is not lead. That is put down in the books right now as perhaps one of the most catastrophic, catastrophic events in human history is adding lead to gasoline because they think that it globally might have, this is all large, like quantified science, so you can't really tell you like per case. But I think it might have globally dropped the human IQ by about seven to ten points in like the globe yeah. because of how much lead is just in the air constantly. And that person who decided to solve his company's problem of knocking might have accidentally or intentionally, once they found out and they said, don't tell anyone, contributed to the death and slow uh, neurodevelopment of everyone on planet earth so he's kind of a piece of shit monster who did it but yeah. he did it for the right reasons because that knocking really is a pain in my ass yeah and if, the, if it weren't for that me and joe probably wouldn't have this podcast because we'd be too smart to have it <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right yeah that's exactly if it weren't for right. lead we'd probably be doing better things yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and if and if you if you're on that same thing i, I like to bring up uh, another uh, genius another monarch Please do, yeah. Of, uh, we're dying. And we're going to bring up the monarchies that still exist today, which makes me sick to my stomach. But this one is Adolf Friedrich. No, he's not of German descent, but he is Swedish. He was the king of Sweden, and after eating 14 semlas, which is a traditional Nordic dessert made of a sweet bun filled with almond paste and whipped cream. Sounds like an almond croissant with a little bit of a... Almond paste. Oh, gay. I fucking hate almonds. Uh, yeah, they smell yeah. like cyanide. Uh, Swedish kids now know him as the king who ate himself to death because that night after he ate 14 of those semlas he died i don't know if that contributed Damn. to his death exclusively but if that's his kind of uh his style that he likes to eat desserts maybe he, maybe he really did eat himself to death yeah maybe, maybe not that night but maybe over the past 40 years or so oh boy oh boy yeah 
Um, so I've, I've got a guy, um, King William II, because I'm sticking, I'm sticking to the uh, the QE uh, Queen Elizabeth monarch. Uh, yes, shit. The, the monarchs of Great Britain. Yeah, so um, he's the son of William the Conqueror. Ooh, that's a that's a real famous one. He's a real famous one, and he died in a real stupid way. You know, like he, you know, so um, his son left the world in a way that was less embarrassing than his father, who died on like a horse accident, and then then no one found him for like a couple weeks, and then they found he, him. Just, he, like Christopher the Reeves. The king it. is in the woods, dead for like a couple weeks. No one noticed. No one checked on him. Pretty funny. Um, uh. He probably did say, no one bother me, and then they, then he, he was right. Yeah, he's like, I'm just going to go on a horse ride, and then all of a sudden he fell off and broke his fucking neck. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, this guy was, uh, reminds me of a certain somebody in modern history uh, named uh, Dick Cheney. Oh, I know that the guy. The old Dick Cheney thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, he was the president uh, after Bill Clinton, right? And then the other guy was there too. Dick Cheney was not the president. Yeah, wasn't he the guy <laughs> who made all the decisions completely and ran the entire world and started two wars? And then there was that other guy from Texas who was there too? Well, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, they both were uh, joined the hip. But yeah, um, what was that guy's name? The guy that Dick Cheney decided everything he did all the time and uh, he'd smile and wave at the camera? Dick Bush, something like that. Um, yeah, there Dick, was a Bush involved yeah, in Dick. Dick. Yeah, Dick Cheney and Dick Bush. They were the yeah, two yeah, guys. Yeah, Dick Bush. Yeah. So, so when, anyways, Dick Cheney, the uh, the modern uh, war machine of America, that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Dick Cheney um, shot someone hunting by accident because they thought he was a deer. Oops. Whoops. I think he thought it was a pheasant, actually. They were oh, pheasant hunting. Pheasant, P-H. Yeah. Not a peasant. I mean, because um, everyone can confuse a person with a deer because they're so similar. And easy. they're both mammals and furry. But I mean, with a pheasant, it kind of seems suspect, you know. Yeah. He blasted him. He blasted him. He gets a shotgun the round. The old buckshot in the Woo! ass. But that's yeah. a fun one, you know. That's a hard one to write home to the to the uh, wife there. Yeah, nothing like getting a thousand degree uh, ball of lead in your ass. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, I'll um, pay for your medical bills, but what I'll really pay for is you and your wife telling the whole world that you still love me and it was just an accident. Just an accident. How much is that going to cost So, me? King William II um, was killed while hunting in a forest near the village of Brockenhurst. Mm. When one of his members of the hunting party uh, shot him through the lung. <laughs> by juve! Uh, by juve. Through All the, the heart, depending on the source you consult. The Honestly, king, either way, it's not a good thing. The king quickly succumbed to the wound by the indignation, but it didn't end there, because for reasons that aren't entirely clear... The king's hunting party, rather than trying to find his body, just went home. Bloody hell. God damn. The very goal of it all. You would They shot this. him in the fucking chest. I mean, that is insane. Just so he like, got oh, shot whoopsie-daisy. through the fucking chest, and then they left him there to rot for several days. Yeah, that, that um, seems like a hit job. Eh, a little bit. Yeah, so... I mean, even just faking and being like, oh, are you okay? But just leaving him there to rot, I mean, you're done, son. Yeah, you gotta really not... Uh, that's really fucked up, you know. Um, yeah, that seems like they uh, they wanted him dead anyway. Yeah, imagine being the king, and all of a sudden you're like, "Let's go hunting," and then you with people, everyone, like imagine having the social, uh, the inept, the inept ability to sense social uh, behaviors of your peers yeah. that they all want to shoot you, and you go, "Let's go hunting." I think it's like uh, it's like Caesar with uh, Brutus. It's like if you're always the man on top and you're surrounded by yes men, you're you're not equipped to see when they're like behind your back being like this fucking piece of shit. That's it. Because they never they never address any problems with you, so you never know when they have a problem with you. It's most CEOs because if you if you you can take the risk of speaking your mind and getting fired, or you go I'm gonna talk or at that shit time about becoming guy. beheaded. You know. Yeah, exactly. So but then meanwhile he, they all hate you and you get to know about he it. He fucking died. That um, guy's dead as fuck. Dead as fuck. As monarchs all end up. They mm-hmm. live on top of the world and they end in the ground. Which reminds me of George Plantagenet, who was the Duke of Clarence, Earl of Salisbury, and Earl of Warwick. And I don't know where that is, but because of all the names of towns in Rhode Island and Massachusetts and Maine, it's definitely England. Because we just took all their town names and put them there. Yep. Anyway, this, this article here says that per his request... He drowned in over a hundred gallons of wine. 
Now that's how I want to go, like honey. <laughs> I want to go like that. I mean, I don't know if it was his request. 100 gallons of wine. But that was his request? That's what it says. It's per his request. But I imagine 100 that... 100 gallons? I don't know if... I, I would think that it wasn't an execution, him being the king. But I mean, 100 gallons of wine is quite a bit. And we talked about but this it's also not in the past. Think about it. Home Deal buckets, five gallons. Right. But it is so, a yeah. lot of alcohol absorbing through your system. Because we talked about this, maybe not on a podcast, but the fact that when you're drinking alcohol, it's going through your mouth being absorbed by your stomach and processed through your liver. Yeah. If you put alcohol in your bloodstream directly, it takes a very small percentage of it to affect you in the very same way. Because your body doesn't want alcohol, your brain wants it. So your body's trying to make it weaker and weaker as it goes through your system here. But if you put it directly in your bloodstream, it goes right to your brain, your brain goes, that's what I'm talking about. Mm. So if you jump in a pool of alcohol, it gets absorbed through your capillaries, through your eyes, through yes. your anus, through your ears, through your yeah. nose. And that goes all in your bloodstream. So wow. you actually don't even have to take a swig of it to be, have alcohol poisoning if you actually submerge in alcohol. Sure. Now, wine doesn't have that high of an alcohol percentage to do that to you, yeah. but it does not take much if every pore of your body is absorbing alcohol all at the same time. Definitely your butthole. Definitely your butthole. Yeah. And you will die very fast. So if you did jump in a 100 gallons of wine and you sat there for a while naked... I think you would need immediate medical attention whether or not you decide to take a couple of gulps, which is, why wouldn't you? Yeah. If you're going to be a submerged in wine, why wouldn't you take a couple of gulps? I mean, when else are you going to do that? You yeah. can't drink pool water and feel yeah. that good. No. It's, it, honestly, it's not a bad. couple of Carlo Rossi bad. jugs. To g -g 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 -g. It's not that bad. I mean, drowning that, at least you're like, all of a sudden you're just like too drunk and it's over. You know, like, yeah. it's, not, it's not the worst thing in the world. So uh, It's probably better to drown in alcohol than in chlorinated water if I had to guess I would much rather drink wine yeah the chlorinated water would burn that's that's a cell killer well I think that more people have died in chlorinated water than wine I think I think so which yeah. is a shame I wish that everyone who died in the pool died in a pool of wine yeah we do too because I have a do. heart yeah that's it yeah really yeah yep. any more weird deaths before we move on I think I got a couple uh, more yeah I got a booty call Oh, that's Specific a Specific booty call. We got a real slut here. Um, oh, yeah. His name is King Alexander III, and he was a ruler of Scotland who was described as a time in relative peace, which means he was a, a whore. Um, <laughs> he didn't that's have any... He had occasional battles with, you know, Norwegian kings or whatever it is, but it's reported that after King Alexander's first wife... Wife... Mm -hmm. And only son passed away, unfortunately. Huge bummer. He married another woman called Yolanda of Drew. D R U. D R E U X. My name is Yolanda. You gotta be careful with that. Yeah. You know that. If you if you all of a sudden you're on a booty call for Yolanda, you gotta be real careful. And uh, there's not a whole lot that everyone knows about Yolanda. And her name is Y O L A N D E. Yolanda. Yeah, Yolanda. Um, we we can say that with some certainty that she probably possessed one of the early examples of a butt that wouldn't quit. <laughs> That's for damn sure. Yeah, nothing like having a girl that keeps trying to have sex with you that you don't want to have sex with. Wow, I mean, does anything drive a man more there. crazy than that? That is a thing that can happen. It sounds like the dream, but it sometimes is not the dream. You know what I mean? It's like you don't know what you got. <laughs> Until it's gone. Yeah, but sometimes that can be a thing. So they suspect this because in 1286, Alexander, against the advice of all his friends, who were like, hey, dude, don't. I've heard this one before. Yeah, dude, her butt is fucking nice. She has a wicked nice ass, but just please stop. Yeah. Like, she's bad news. I know her ass won't quit, but you should quit her. Yes, this is this chick is bad news. Maybe don't bang her. Yeah. You know, like, that's the thing. Like, don't, don't leave the bar and go home with this chick. It's like, not. We know that this is like. Yeah, she's gonna bang you, but it's you're. In, I mean, she yeah. quite literally has an ass for the ages. We're still speaking about it to this day. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's how important it was. But that's like, it's it also is. like you know, my wife is is hot, psychotic. You know, like <laughs> she she so. Um, he tried to ride from Edinburgh to the count to the town of Kinghorn. I love the idea of the guy drunk driving his horse to the fucking booty call and being like, God, Your so Majesty, good. we're telling you not to do it. He's like, fuck off. She really likes me. I can tell we have something really special. I'm mean, sorry, Scottish. I can tell you that there is something special together. <laughs> I can really tell, boy. Well, it is 12 a.m. You do it better than I do. Um, 
This is an ass for the ages. <laughs> <laughs> Not ages, ages. Well, I know it's a storm. I'll go from Edinburgh to the southern border. There's a hurricane, but I don't. I trust me. Wow. His horse is probably like, dude, I'm telling you. Yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, the horse. I'll ride, but like, this is going to be bullshit this when I get bullshit. there. This is going to be bullshit. I'll be fine, but you fucking ain't. Um, we're not going back tonight. When we get there, I'm sleeping, dude. Yeah, I'm, yeah, exactly. So it was, he He literally, dude, like, middle of the fucking night, this motherfucker decided he to used, ride his goddamn horse in 1286. He's flooring The year him. is 1286. He's going right for a booty call Let's in go. a storm. A literal booty call, too, I mean. Alone. On. Just to visit his wife, a journey that only makes sense if you assume the king was making a booty call. While making the so trip, far, so good. the king was thrown from his horse. Ooh. So the horse was not on board with this. Yeah, the horse tried to convince him, but then he got He's tired like, of yeah, it. yeah, I'm not going to do this. So perhaps after his spook by a bolt of lightning or the king's royal erection poking it in the back. Okay, that's some edi- that's some editorial shit. Dude, this is history. <laughs> Why do you the assume king's that? erection poking the horse? If a king's erection poked the horse, then every king would be thrown off a horse because Dude, every king knows how hot it is to ride a horse. Imagine being that Sex. fucking horny that you get on your horse with a full mast. Oh yeah. Well, if you weren't already, when you start riding it and start rock, rocking and rolling and moving and grooving, all you're doing is picturing that sweet ass, and you're just growing up and down. And Dude, up he and got down. a text from this chick. Nice get, warm he... thighs wrapped around the fucking beast of burden, and you just think I'm gonna go six to midnight on this thing. Yep. And I'm all I can imagine. Imagine if he if he uh, if he uh, went, went off early on the horse, just thinking about it, and going, oh god. He'd turn around. Uh, no. <laughs> oh yeah, it would be better off. He'd be like, ah, oh, that's all not worth uh, it. Yeah, bullshit. Bunch. Of, this is stupid. I should. Yeah, jerk. so the horse is trying to be like, hey man, I'll help you out here. We need to go home. It's just stor- storming out here. Let me, let me give you a couple bucks and see if you get. Oh shit, he fell. Yeah, he should have he sh- he should have fucking done the deed before he got on the horse and been like, yeah, yeah, yeah the royal decree. Yeah, I'm thinking I want to ride a horse. Walk it to... first before making any romantic decisions about girls. If you think your mind is clouded, make sure you bust a lot, then you can decide more readily. And if you busted one, you would not <laughs> st- storm away from Edinburgh to wherever the fuck he went. <laughs> no chance. But he did. So but he, he did. Uh, full mast. Um. Was poking the horse in the back with his erection. Wow. And the horse decided that the horse didn't want to be poked in the back with his erection, which... Which I think is understandable. It doesn't say how big it was, but here's the thing. I mean, no no offense to this guy. Through the but, saddle. But to have the horse really, really feel that, it means that the guy was packing some heat. Oh, yeah. He's packing some serious heat. If I know nice. anything about generations-long incestual families, they have nice, nice uh, genitalia. That's that's for sure. Have you seen Prince Harry's? I feel like it's probably not. Yeah, I'm being sarcastic. They must be all shriveled up craziness in there. Yeah, like little tiny white, white wieners. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, gotta be. Just like soft. I mean, literally, if you never... Kind of like the guy who wanted the, the face towels, you know, like with the... <laughs> yeah, and like, uh, Brian. Just like a Brian, super, C. Brian C. Yeah, like a super soft like yeah. wiener. If, you know? if your entire sexual exploits is based on the fact that you were born into a power and money... Why the fuck would any genetic? I mean, I guess no, you're I guess getting, you're getting with. A, I mean, maybe your kids have big booties, but they don't have big dicks. There's no way their dicks are big, dude. There's no way. Like there just isn't a way. That comes with something else. I don't know where where that yeah. starts, but like. And also in Northern Europe, not really famous for uh, uh, cock size. I don't the know, old think. wiener size, yeah. So, yeah. so the horse is getting, which is not important. It's not. Um, it's so, about you know. It's about how you ride the horse, not about how big the saddle is. And he here's the thing: is that he. Uh, was, I mean, I, I I don't care because I have a huge saddle, so I don't care. But it's just it, it's like, <laughs> it doesn't so, matter. So so here's here's the de- yeah. If if because if, if you guys are getting confused by Bro. him riding a horse in twelve eighty six with yeah, action, yeah. yeah, I'll skip back and, to the and the horse yeah. throwing him off of the horse for having an erection yeah imagine this imagine getting on a bus in 2022 with a hu- with a boner yeah that's like poking through your pants and sweatpants you would get kicked off the bus right that's only <laughs> fair that's just reality i mean like you can't be doing that no you can't be showing up with like like if you, it's down and your sweatpants and it's poking out yeah you're licking go, your lips sir sir king yeah. king your majesty your, your majesty you need to leave the bus because mm-hmm. you're uh, you're now like a pedophile. Please get off this bus. <laughs> this is bullshit. Don't drop me off in Rochester. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's, so back then it was a horse. Now it's the bus, and yeah. now this guy. It's a one to one comparison. Now 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 King fucking Alexander the Third is getting kicked off the bus. 
for having a boner. Big gal. Which me and dude, dude, Joe, me and you used to ride the bus all the time in Amherst. Like, yeah, you we used to have boners the whole time. No one ever kicked us off. No, but we 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 hid them with you know textbooks and backpacks or whatever. Yeah, you know, like it was you know like you wouldn't do you wouldn't just show up with like <laughs> just like. Just push it down a little no, bit. No, you should be ashamed and you should hide it. Away. Well, like, like imagine you have like a giant sunflower stalk and you like push it down a little bit so it's pointing outward like that. Yeah. You put it up under the band. He's not doing that, obviously. So sure. you get kicked off the bus. Right. If it's not in the band, you're off the bus. That's just the fact. Yeah, exactly. And if you want to go lo- go to a lair, whatever it is, you say you have your cell phone in your pocket, that's fine. But like, well, you're that, dead. So what the fuck are you gonna do? So so he was poking this horse in the back with his boner. And he got a big whack. And uh, and the horse was not cool with that. Ejected him and killed him immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Took a digger. He got ejected with a boner going 30 miles an hour off a horse. And, uh, and then he was found by a traveler the next day who decided to make the 30-mile journey at a more leisure pace just a few miles short. Of her fucking apartment. Oh, brutal. It's like getting Bummer. a drunk driving accident, the same street she lives on. Uh, right through the windshield. Yep, yeah, just trying. Fully hard. Yep, yeah, and this is his mistress, too. Like, he had a wife, and Yolanda was not hers, but he was just like, I'm going to fucking slay, which means he's going to come in five seconds. Yeah. And, um. I mean, after all that buildup. Oh, he's had a boner for that long, dude? Yeah. He's dude, ready his, to rock. Dude, his his storage unit is packed. And yeah. it's gonna go everywhere. Well, Yolanda probably was like, Shit, that pussy fucking kills us. <laughs> <laughs> this is the ass that kills kings. It is, and he never got to have it, dude. Wow. I feel bad. I'm gonna need my daughter that. Yolanda? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the first person to rent me an apartment named Yolanda, and it was not worth dying over a boner, you know? Well, pretty good bummer. takes all kinds. That's a great story. Do you want to do any more uh, Dead Monarch tales? Or uh, Those are the best, but I do know that there is a term for this, and I appreciate that. Um, the killing of a monarch is called a regicide. Yeah, yeah, regicide, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it means the deliberate killing of a monarch in a narrower sense in the British tradition refers to the execution of a king after a trial. So it's not that you're dying with a boner. It's a little different. No, yeah, but it's, you know, I like the specific name. It's like there's there's names for all different kinds of killings, and it all ends with side, right? C-I-D. But there's so specifically the term regicide when you kill a monarch. Isn't it just a, it's a, we have, now we call it an assassination. Yeah. But I guess if you kill the president, it's kind of a regicide, even though it's not a king. Yeah, but they're not a... But if you kill... Uh, the regent. Whoever the fucking president is now, you know, like, you don't... It's Joe Biden. It's not a regicide. It's it's an assassination or assassination attempt. Yeah. This is a regicide because it's a monarch. So, um... So, There's I guess, a lot of drownings on this list. I mean, it, the amount of people that drown that were... I mean, people don't keep an eye on it. It's like, it's not a four-year-old kid in a pool, like... Pull your king out of the water. We have multiple drownings with the wine. I just read one the guy drowned wearing his armor in the river. Don't go in the river with armor. You drown. Dude, there's Idiot. no... So, like, let's be real for a second. Like, yeah, I don't care how good a swimmer you are. If you're wearing, like, Excalibur from the movie Armor and you go for a swim, it's not good. You're gonna... If you go in a fucking sweatsuit, you're gonna have almost Sw- drowned. Dude. With all the water dude, soaking dude, in Dude, down. imagine you jump off a bridge... And you're wearing a fucking tracksuit with with Nikes on. It's you're not fucked. looking good for you, dude. You now you now have encompassed. Is that the word? You've now. You're over encumbered. Over encumbered. <laughs> uh, thank you, Skyrim. Um, yeah. Because your your one pound of clothes turns into you know sixty five pounds of wet sweatsuit. Yeah, and then imagine that pulls you down. It's all armor. Yeah, you gotta be naked. You're double fucked. You're fucked. Yes, we gotta be naked. Uh, Frederick Louis, Prince of Wales, hit in the head with a cricket ball. You shit me? Pyrrhos, while trying to invade a town, he's the king of Macedon, an elderly woman hit him in the head with a tile from a rooftop. So Ooh, people are getting that's bonked. bad. People are getting bonked out big time. So, oh shit. So, yeah, there you go. Can you I mean, imagine, ac- like, everyone makes mistakes, but you imagine actually killing the king because you're playing Yeah, the game. cricket ball one, like, that was definitely an accident. I think the tile with the invading town, that was a great shot by an old lady who was like, I will 
to oh, no. the invaders. Oh no, the, the slate tile fell off the roof and hit him in the head. Kill the king. Yep, yep. that's how you do it. Those tiles, dude, those are those are 10 pounds, man. 10 pounds from 30 feet or 60 feet ain't good. I mean, the hell of a shot on that old bag, though, to really just boom, yeah. right on the fucking dome. Yep. So, um, so we didn't mention this because um, we're gonna we're gonna get into this real quick, but um, you know, Queen Elizabeth, uh, you know, just passed, and um, that's what it that's is. That's why we're talking about dead monarchs, you guys. It is, and there's just so you know, just so you guys know, because everyone's mad at her for a lot of reasons. There are forty four, well, forty three other sovereign countries across the across the globe. That have a monarch as their head of That's state. That's right. There's still countries in the world that have kings and queens. In the year of our Lord, 2022, with all versions of government, capitalism, communism, socialism, modern democracies, most nations in the world that work together economically have some kind of version, or at least a false flag version, of a elected government mm-hmm. and some representation. A lot of it's so corrupt that it's basically a monarchy, it's but it's insane. not. Yeah, right. But a lot of countries have a literal monarchy still. Oh yes, my lord, my king, my queen. We have cars and iPhones, but you're my king, my lord, because your daddy banged another guy. It's ridiculous. And I... Oh, here we go. So there's a lot of countries that still have them. Dylan, let's let's run down a list here. Ten, this is, this is hang on, today. Hang on. Today, ten in North America. Ten. No. Thirteen in Asia. There's no. There's not ten in North America. There's only three countries in North America. Dude, it says this right now. There is not I'm ten this. countries in North America. Dude, why would Tuco.co.ke live? The, the, none of these are North why? American. Uh, Maybe Canada is part of it, but that's I, it. Dude, it says fucking ten. Out of these What states, are you talking about? It says states. States? Some of their states. Just look at this list. It's all the countries that have monarchs. I don't know why this says that then. Wait, wait, wait. I gotta look at this now. Dude, do you, do you trust tuco.co.ke? I've never heard of it. I've never heard of Tuco. I'm gonna go on uh, this right now. It says this right now. Uh, how, 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 out of these states, ten are in North America. 13, 13 in Asia, or Asia, 3 12 in Africa, in Europe, 12 in Europe, 6 in Oceania, which... That's, it, uh, there's only 3 countries in North 44. America. There can't be 10 kings well, and queens. Maybe this is, you know, uh, a uh, foreign R- run, publication. Let's run this down. What let's, is let's, .co .ke? Like, what the fuck is that? I don't know what KE is, dude. This sounds like some fucking... This is our shit. source for I mean, here's, here's the here's the, the headlines. Elections, politics, Kenya. It's Kenya. So Kenya, Kenya, Kenya thinks that, that there's ten monarchs, ten countries. Common, I mean, they're commonwealths. Okay. These are North, North America. America, Barbados, uh, Bahamas, Saint wait, Vincent. Th- wait, Jamaica's part of North America? Yeah. So all those islands are North America. Yeah. That's why. Each individual island. Yep. Okay, well that makes That's more sense. Why but anyways, says- here's the countries that have rulers that aren't each of the individual shit characters. new zealand brunei norway qatar oh don't run through them too fast jordan bhutan you you this is your phone you got this sorry go ahead uh so, 10 countries i guess i never really thought the fact that that the caribbean so, all those islands are considered part of north america yeah i never knew that i thought, yeah, I thought it was south america dude dude but not dude there's one miss the, the one the only that. fucking one i've been to is not on here which is trinidad and tobago but i'm gonna read through them real quick Bahamas, St. Vincent and Grenadines, Belize, Antigua and Barbuda, Papua New Guinea, Can- Canada Monarchy, Barbados, Papua New Grenada. Guinea is in, is in, isn't it like next to Australia and shit? I thought so. Um, Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, Australia Monarchy, St. Lucia, Jamaica. Australia's part of this shit too? New Z- fucking, turn this Kenyan website off. New Zealand, off. the Solomon Islands, about. which the Solomon Islands are in the Pacific. And New Zealand is in next to Australia. So then it says Bahrain. Bahrain is one of them. Then the Kingdom of Belgium. Belgium. Then Brunei Dara Salam, which is a small nation found in the Southeast Asian island of Borneo. Borneo, yeah. Eswatini, Japan. Japan is not on the list. Japan is one of the constitutional monarchy countries with a ruler who is the 125th member of the world's most ancient dynasty. The country's monarch emperor, Akahito, sat on the throne in 1989 on April 30th, 2019. What? Emperor Akihito ab- ad- abdicated himself, paving the way for his son, Naruhito, to be the new emperor of the Christanthem throne. 
Ruler. I don't have any of these on this list here, man. Uh, I don't think that Japan has uh, as a monarch. I think that part of the conditions for the end of World War II is that he had to abdicate the throne, right? He had to step down. Uh, it's possible, yeah. I don't know. I don't know about this Kenyan website, man. <laughs> I mean, I what do you mean? I'm just saying that I don't believe anything. Dude, this is say. my. This is a good source. I mean, I'm gonna trust uh, our most trusted source, Wikipedia, over tuka.ke.coe.uk.org. All right, Joe, uh, take us over here. I don't know. That was a fun to decide. I'll say you're, the ones you already said. Bhutan, yes. Oman, that's next to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Sweden still has a king. Oh, that's cool. And this one didn't die of Armenian deserts. Saudi Whoa. Arabia, which I think is the most prominent one of all. Because that not only has a king, it's like, oh, look at the figurehead. He is the leader of the nation. He makes well, decisions. That's the thing. is compared to like the queen right now. Saudi Arabia is king. And you don't fuck is the with actual that motherfucker, king. dude. He's the actual king. Dude, yeah. they behead people like on a weekly basis. Yeah, they murder uh, journalists. Uh, and they just started a new PGA golf tour where a lot of American golfers have signed on for it because they like to are make you money. Shit me? Oh yeah, like Phil Mickelson's part of it. Like a lot of famous American golfers have signed on for hundreds of millions of dollars to play on the. They call it the Live Tour, L I V, and it's it's run by the president, <laughs> not the president, the king. Of Saudi Arabia, golf, golf, yeah, it still trying. it still legitimizes his his name is King uh, Mohammed Salman, and he is a, a murderer and a uh, despot and a fucking dictator, and uh, the world thinks he's cute and he's funny, he's having a little hey, I let I let women he's drive cars golf, now, yeah. so I'm not that bad. He's the richest person in the world if you don't count independent yeah. wealth because he's wealth of the nation and he murders people openly and the presidents shake hands with him and sell him weapons and shit it's fucking disgusting to the king long live the king of saudi arabia it's fucking ridiculous yeah we have google you have a fucking king who takes the oil and sells it and doesn't let you drive cars and fucking kills journalists because they might talk shit about him kings and queens are bullshit people Throw off your chains, world. You want to be ruled by a fucking dictator? It's insane. It's insane. This guy's the worst of them all. Mohammed Salman. May he burn in fucking hell. But there isn't a hell. But anyways. Yeah, Bahrain, like you said. Uh, Denmark. They still have a king. I guess so. I mean, all these European countries, I know it's like more of a... Uh, it's right, a, it's a tradition. It's like England, right? Well, it's like England. It's a, it's a tradition. Like they're not they yeah, don't they're, they're not they're not, they're not like making a whole lot of yeah. Saudi Arabia is still yeah. like their that's that's their like that's their Actual Joe thing. Biden right now. You yeah. Know? Yeah, and most of these are mostly like that, and obviously half of them, like you said, Australia, New Zealand, they are on the list because they're still considered uh, colonies of England. So, in that sense, they still have their queen was Queen Elizabeth, the Queen of Australia and the Queen of New Zealand, and now their queen is Charles the Third. Even though they're both independent countries with their own governments and their own uh, democracies, I don't know why. What's worth hanging on to that? If I was New Zealand, especially, I'd be like, okay, no, I'm not yeah. doing that shit anymore. England, you guys can do your whole jerk off session up there, how you love the queen or whatever. But like, we literally had to break away from you, from you controlling us. We have our own government, our own parliament now, our own president. Why are you still respecting the Queen of England anymore? You're, you couldn't be farther away from them. Well, it's like what happened with Vietnam and with, like, you know, other countries in Africa. Like, with Vietnam and with countries in Africa who... Um, so, Vietnam was ruled by the French. Yeah. And they... Ho Chi Minh won independence. Because, like, this is... Like, what the fuck? Like, we're our own country. We're our own people. Why are you guys ruling us? This makes no sense. Yeah, you just took over. So, it's the same thing. You know, like... It's exactly the same thing. Like, why are you guys doing this? Right. You know? I mean, I, I just don't see why they would... St I can see why they did it at the time, because it's like exerting control over a country and saying, like, we rule you now. Back in but back now, then, when there's... Ex like, I'm an explorer. You yeah, know? Like, yeah. That's not a thing anymore. No. That's why that happened. That's why the world is what it is now, because of all that. But yeah, it's insane. That, that's what I mean. I not blame people for being ruled by a monarch in the Middle Ages, or even in 1910. When, they, when the colonialism was still so powerful. But in the year 2022, to be in a place like New Zealand or Sweden and say, yes, that's our king, fuck tradition. No single person with a bloodline family should rule a nation of people. It's fucking ridiculous. We've, we've found out the best way to run shit in the world so far. 
I'm not saying this is the end-all be-all. There's always room for improvement. Obviously, our governments are far from perfect. And in fact, they're closer to terrible than they are to perfect. But at the same time, sure beats having Henry V fucking come around cutting your head off because you felt sure sexy knows. today. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You should be ashamed of yourselves, all you fucking nations with rulers. I know this coming from an American perspective, and obviously this is the way I was raised. Yeah, but it's insane. Fuck fucking King George. Get him out of here. Yeah. I think it's ridiculous. You should all be ashamed of yourself and stand up to your governments. Yeah, but also we're... Is there a king? I know, but we're Americans Kissing the feet of a man who's your daddy for life? Oh, yes, my lord, I love you. And your kids and a little Meghan Markle come on in and have the new family. Oh, what's Harry doing? You're all fucking gross. Get over it. They're fucking celebrities. Yeah, we don't care at all. they're, They're rich because they were born that way. And not unlike rich people's kids who have to work and, you know, work or do something... These people literally have no job but to look pretty and wear the crown jewels and walk around and wave at people. It's that's fucking it. bullshit. That's really generally it. Like, what did Queen Elizabeth do for fucking Afghanistan? <laughs> the didn't. Balkans? Well, she didn't. The like, Cold the War? Balkans, what the fuck did she do in the Cold War? Nothing. Sat there and looked pretty? Well, in World War II, she apparently drove an ambulance. That's it's nice. Like, Before she was the queen. There you go. Getting some shit done. Uh, yeah, but like... Yeah, and Harry was even, in Afghanistan, too. He, he was, took a pictures did, on top of the tank. Hey, look at me. Yeah. No, he actually did do. He actually did see combat, and they let him do some things. Like I think he was like the backseat or an Apache or whatever. It was like, and he, I'm not saying I would blame him. I wouldn't fucking want to get him back. He didn't want because well, he did that because he didn't want. Uh, he was like, I want to go prove myself and go kill people. You know, like yeah. But it's also like you know, like when you look at the whole. Well, like thing. you're saying, you didn't. They didn't choose to be born into it, but you can choose not to worship these people who are just fucking people like you and me. Yeah. With more money than you. That's all it is. That's it. So anybody who like really sympathizes for this, you kind of just go like you're, it's kind of like, it's polarizing. It's as sad as it is when anyone else dies. It's not a good thing. And obviously more people are affected because more people know her and feel some kind of bond to her. But it's, it's not more important than when my fucking friend's brother dies. That's the whole point. You know, I'm not even related to the guy. I'm not even affected by him, but it's still more important than that. Well, people in people in the UK are like you know they they look most I feel like most especially the working class look down on her and be like this is stupid like and they should we're paying taxes to keep this person alive how much that's fucking it, money that's does it cost it to keep the royal family not just at alive at least a million dollars at the social status and wealth that they have Dude, right now who probably way more than a million dollars a day insanity a day watch how much his funeral costs. This is going to be the fucking most expensive funeral in the history of humanity. Mm-hmm. All because this old bag decided to kick the bucket for the first time. Yeah. Oh, in England, how are you doing now that you left uh, the European Union? Is Brexit going well for your economy? We'll spend the rest of your money on the Queen's funeral. God save yeah. the Queen. And they'll find that money. God save the Queen and God let all of us fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> they're more important than us because they are they're just they're just born well, that's that it, way but like how do you how do you expect we're worth less than they're how the do you king. expect to have like the strongest so like so for example like the, the the strongest people in in the uk who had their flaws best example that has ever existed in the history of the uk and of england winston churchill sure fucking solid motherfucker that guy was fucking amazing it was perfect for the time they needed him they need him, and he made mistakes. Yes. This is a person who was flawed, who had mistakes, but he was—he was an asshole. He was an asshole, but he was an asshole out of out of out of trying to protect and save his nation. Mm-hmm. And the queen didn't have a whole lot to do with that. No. And the king and the monarchy, they they had their influence or whatever it was. But that's a guy who made decisions, made good decisions, made bad decisions, and most importantly, took accountability. He took all. This is th- th- we're talking, you know. 1939 to 1945. That is a good point. This is a guy who took 100% of the accountability for all the Lancaster bars taken off of uh, <coughs> RF, you know, Lakenhurst and all these other things and bringing on, you know, you know, all these <coughs> joint bases for bombers because it was mostly a bomber campaign yeah. and their air force and their soldiers and millions of deaths of his soldiers. He took the brunt of this, not them. I think that not only is a perfect point about Churchill, but it's a point in general about monarchs is that they have no accountability for their actions. Nope. When your voice is the end-all, be-all of decision-making, then even if you make the wrong decision, you cannot be blamed for it because you're yeah. the, the decision-maker. So even if people we have in modern day like Churchill who have immense amounts of power, they take on immense amounts of responsibility. And as a monarch, maybe they say, heavy is the head that wears the crown. 
Yeah, if you want to take it that way, but if you decide not to give a fuck, then you have no repercussions. Nothing. No one blames the king for letting millions of people starve or ordering the slaughter of millions of people. That's what the king or the queen wants to do. Well, during, that's it. There's no responsibility there. That's that's it. Yeah. But if you're Winston Churchill, you get blamed for this shit. Well, it's you insane. Should. It's insane. Like during COVID, you know, like Boris Johnson got blamed for his decisions. Not them. And he should. You know, and they yeah they, they just they just sailed through COVID the whole time. By the way, the Queen made it the whole way through COVID, pretty good. Um, and, that, and finally took her down. I think that she got hit by a lorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're driving her. They're, then they're all like, "Oh, she loved to drive her Land Rovers and her cars, and she liked to do things." It's like, yeah, it's like. Oh my I think God. she actually what, what actually happened to her just, though. All joking aside, is that she uh, she got bucked off her horse on a booty call. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But but the whole thing is that like that's 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 so if any so our, our you know we're bringing awareness to the fact that like okay if you blindly I've I watched the what was that sh- the TV show about the Queen it was called maybe it was called the Queen could um, have been it was called the the something like she has a good story there are hardships this is a per- human being of course everyone does they all do everyone has their own version of things but overall like. You know, like, when you look at, like, the real men, the real people who went through things or whatever it was, it wasn't Prince Everyone. Charles, it wasn't fucking any of these things, it was, it was like the Winston Churchills. Yeah. He goes down to history. Yeah. He does. And, Winston and Ch- so Winston, does she, though. She will be she, just as famous sure. as him. Uh, to people who don't think deeply. So, most of the people on planet Earth. She'll go on Wikipedia as the monarchy stuff, whatever it is, but Winston Churchill... You know, you know what was one of the most interesting things about him is that like he killed I think it was like four to four, five, six, seven thousand sailors mm. in World War One because he made a bad judgment call. That's huge. He was in his twenties or thirties and in World War One he sent a, a fleet of ships. They got fucking obliterated by the Germans. Mm. And it was it was his mistake. Right. And he was a young officer in the military who was like in command or whatever it was. Yeah. And he didn't think he'd recover from that. And then World War Two came, whatever it was, things came through with him, and he decided that's why he was a hard motherfucker and why he was an asshole. Because right. he realized that he's at a point in life where it's like he can be nice to people and be like, oh yeah, of course, or he can just be an asshole and make decisions. Right. And I support him one hundred percent. You know, that's really so. The heavy, that's head but, but he crown. took Winston Churchill took one hundred and ten percent of the accountability yeah. for Britain, not the monarchy. Not not fucking her father when he died of fucking cirrhosis, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. like he had. You know, I think he did right. Like he had. Um, I, wouldn't they say that he uh, he got the cocktail of the cocaine and the fucking uh, morphine? Uh, was yeah. that not her dad? Uh, I think he it, died in nineteen thirty six. Wouldn't it be was like? like they propped him up and he tried to give speeches and he was dying, but he yeah. died of um, he he died of something you know like that was very presentable and very like he tried to hide it but he fucking yeah. died of something that people yeah. die of of like you know like we all know people who died of cirrhosis and like mm-hmm. it was something like that and he was or you know it could have been cancer or whatever but like i think it was and they said he had lung problems was it lung problems yeah, yeah. He, he died of something so like she inherit she became at 25 years old in 1950 whatever it was she right. became that but like yeah but overall winston churchill took the brunt of that not her father no 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 he didn't take any of that shit so that's important to know is I that think like that, that's a that great they're, point they're just in the background it's like it's like being the the ceo of a company and then having uh, one investor who's given 65 percent of the money that you've had to run this company yeah who you know you know is that but you're actually the person again. so um Yeah, I mean, I think that responsibility thing is a huge point, and I, I never really thought of it that way. But I think you bring up a good, good point. Accountability is what makes accountability, yeah. and that's what I think. And monarchs uh, aren't held accountable; they really aren't, even if they're blamed retroactively. She doesn't talk years to you. Later. Dude, when's the last time? I, think I have no saying, idea what her voice like, sounds like. I think maybe she spoke one time in public, like at the beginning of COVID or something. But before that, was like fifty years. Yeah, I like just, she doesn't talk to people. No. Yeah, I think accountability is huge. And accountability should be for the good things and the bad things, which includes Mohammed Salman. It should be accountable, not only for like, oh, hey, look at me, I'm starting a golf tournament. It's that your country sucks, dude. <laughs> you might be rich, but people in your country are poor as shit. And you've got to be one of the worst healthcare systems in the world, the worst human rights Well, record. Saudi Arabia is not poor as shit. And that's... The people are poor as shit, I'm saying. Yeah, well... Brazil is the sixth largest economy in the world, and some of the parts of Brazil are the poorest parts on the no planet. No question, yeah. That's the same thing as Saudi Arabia. 
Yeah, and some Saudi... people have all the money, and the, the problem... people who live there, life isn't great. Well, the problem with Saudi Arabia is great. that, like, it's not. It, there's the so Saudi Arabia has a um, social hierarchy that goes like this. It goes that starts with the king, I imagine. Uh, I'm not counting him right now, um, but yes, um, but it goes Saudi Arabian male number exactly. one, um, U.S. white American male two, number three is God knows what, number four or whatever it is. You go to the list, it's like then all of a sudden it's like. Number 10 is Jewish male. Number 11, Saudi Arabian woman. Yeah, it's out of control. Under They're most well hated more people. than yeah. 10. <laughs> yeah. of, like, all of a sudden, I show up there, I'm number two most respected. Yeah. You two. What the fuck is that? Their own women no, are put... by them. They might have just got them rights to drive a car, but it's like, so why do you want to... Which is the, least, what the weirdest hell? pat in the back ever. Like, like, what the hell is that? Like, I don't... You yeah. know, like, that's insane. No. Uh, yeah, and that just all rubs into the same thing. Where obviously, they have their own issues there, but it all comes down to me the fact that people, I know some, I've heard some historical things, be like, some people just want to be ruled. You know what I mean? Like, they want it. They want to be ruled. And me coming from America, obviously, I have a skewed perspective about authority figures running your life based on their whims. But even people who are born and raised in those places, given the chance, I think that nine times out of ten, they would pick not for a family of incest babies to decide the fate of them and their children for the rest of their lives. I can't imagine they would. It's got to be better to pick the person who's going to do it, even though they'll still fuck you. At least their kids have to run for elections. They don't just automatically get the job. And uh, yeah, so we'll see. Um, we'll see in twenty years Barack Obama's daughter who will win when she runs. Yeah. George Bush's kid, too. Yeah. That so, was Dick Cheney's vice president that I'm talking about. Dick Cheney's vice president? Mm-hmm. I remembered his name now. It's George W. Bush. Yes. Yeah. George W. Bush. I don't, Saudi Arabia also funded 9-11, so let's not forget about that. <laughs> and yeah, all that stuff. So, Osama bin Laden was paid by Saudi Arabia, and he lived in Saudi Arabia at the time he planned 9-11. And he was a CIA agent. And we sell them money, and we sell them weapons, and they're our biggest allies besides um, England and Saudi Arabia. So, well, yeah, no big deal. Up. No big deal. But like, Don't worry back about to the of the Queen, like, there's golf you know, tour. Like, <laughs> let's play golf. <laughs> we can all we can all get back. Like, hey, this is a life that was lost, and we we feel very much like, okay, cool. She went through struggles, and she held her values strong, and whatever it is, and we respect that. I really do. Sure. But when you look at the the people that she quote unquote ruled over, they don't have fond feelings about this, and that's why the meme community just blew this up because they go, "This is insane." Especially people who are part of their like colonies, things like New Zealand, like Australia, like Ireland. I'm yeah. sure people in India aren't too fond of the Queen well, of England. And, well, and we're gonna get over this for two seconds because sure. we didn't mention anything about this. Is that the reason you know Princess Diana Canada? Knew- Princess Diana has the queen on their money. Princess Diana had a problem with this. Yes. This is someone who came up and said, you know, spoke very vocally about this being an issue. Mm -hmm. And she said, this is bullshit. Like, I married in this family. This Mm -hmm. is fucked up. Like, I'm a smart, intelligent, beautiful, competent woman. This whole system is fucked. Right. And the balls to do that. The ball. Well, the price she paid. Yep. She didn't just all of a sudden there was a uh, a, a Mercedes limousine going a hundred miles an hour uh, through, through wherever she it was somewhere in the UK. Is that evading paparazzi? Evading paparazzi sorry. and she died. Mm. You know, and the Queen knew about this. It, I think that the 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 facts out there and we we we're not going to give them out right now. But like Prince Diana was killed. Uh, we don't have time for this. We don't have time for this. But I'm just saying, is that like this? Because <laughs> that could be a whole podcast in itself is uh, assassination method via car crash. Yeah, but she was killed. Princess Charles was cheating on her. Oh, I've seen, Constantly. at least I've heard, I don't know like, as much about it as you do, but I know the surrounding uh, like circumstances, how they would want her to be cut out of the program. She was suppressed, depressed. 
Yeah. And, you know, whatever it was, because she tried to say, like, hey, I'm going to change this. Yeah. Which this is whole not si- good. This whole thing is Number one thing fucked. to get killed is start changing things that people in power don't want to be changed. Exactly. So this is fucked up. This is a big problem. And she wanted, like, if you watch the documentaries on her, they're so disturbing. Mm. It's I don't, insane. but it's not because I don't like Diana. It's because I don't give a shit about the royal family or any of their... No, I, I know, shit. but it's it's good. The Diana thing is very important because it's like... Yeah, well, I don't but that's why, that's The thing is that we're trying to, like, just just put out there a little bit, like, why people are not like, oh, you know, like, if... Um, I honestly can't think of one person in power that, would, that died besides fucking, let's say, Bill Murray. Um, what? Bill Murray's still with us. No, I know, but if Bill Murray died, we'd all be like, fuck yeah, dude, you're fucking awesome. Mm. No one would say, oh, fuck. Well, I think Murray. when Mr. Rogers died, people were like, Mr. Rogers. Pretty much no one had anything bad to say about it. Nope. Him. That's and people the, tried. You know they tried to look for something. And they there's didn't find nothing. Yeah. Nothing there. Yeah. Mr. Rogers, you got nothing on that guy. Yeah. That guy was a Bill fucking... Murray is really hard to work with, and people think he's an asshole on uh, set, but he's yeah, a probably, cool guy but, in general. Yeah, but let's just, let's just move to Mr. Rogers. Rock yeah. goddamn solid. Mm-hmm. That guy got nothing because that guy had a, a core set of values, and he he he's Stuck just to him? he stuck to them. He overcame things. He had a good message, and his entire existence was authentic and genuine. Hmm. And focus on serving others. Serving like others. Altruism. Yeah. That's it. You know, this is not a guy. You know, he didn't. Uh, you know, he didn't care about dying a rich guy. He just was like, hey, I want to have a. I, I want to help everyone be better people yeah this is not that case no it's not at all there's so much more to this and it's fucked up anyone she's helped is people who are buying new hats and pantsuits and wanted to look up on a poster on the wall and think about something nice to look at it reeks of like kim jong un and all that shit it's like my fearless leader Uh, my life sucks my life's terrible but never worry this picture of this person who could easily affect my life differently will make me feel better about this stuff. Maybe my life sucks, but at least Brad Pitt's still rich and beautiful, so I guess it's not so bad after all. Yeah. Yes, it is. Especially if Brad Pitt's your boss. The fuck? Wait, oh my god. Dude. So that's why the meme community that's why has I had to made this part funny, because we, me and Joe talked about like things like, you things know, if, if there's actually real things, you approach it with humor to yes. um, to deal with it, and that's why it hasn't been like this like pure mourning situation. It's because it's 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 so controversial. Sure. So controversial. Absolutely. And there's so much more of this. Like I said, Mr. Rogers dying, it's like, hey, you know, this is a guy who helped society and, and humanity and whatever it is. Yeah. The people who look up to the queen... Why? Why exactly? Like what? What she didn't? What fuck challenges up? did she publicly go I guess? through? What you know, Mister Rogers went through a lot of bullshit in his teens. Yeah. This is a fucking guy who was in Vietnam. You know, like he went through it the whole way through. He had to. He had to speak before Congress to secure funding for PBS. They wanted to shut down the public broadcast yeah. system. He had to get up there in front of the U.S. Congress and say. This is beneficial to kids. This is good to kids. We're man. doing here. I want to be. A, I want to be. I want to show. You didn't have to do that. I want to show boys without fathers what it means to, what they should strive towards, Famously, and what one of the first what a couple times, of things uh, you know, um, like a person uh, of color was on TV and he washed his feet yes, in the same pool. They, Seems exactly. like nothing, but at the time it no, was controversial it was that he did that. He didn't they have to do that. Did, exactly. But he was like, I'm doing it. He didn't work. I'm showing people that it doesn't matter what color your skin is. We're all neighbors in the yeah. neighborhood. And that's why that's why the meme community has made a big joke of this whole thing, yeah. because there's just so much to it that's like, you know, what the fuck, yeah. you know? Why are we all sad about this? Is is the conceit? And I think that any big things that happen like this, they beg introspection from multiple sides. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna, I don't want to get into it, but it's like, you know, when the, you know, when the previous pope resigned, and and then also in Ratzinger. 15 years ago when. Uh, Pope John Paul died. It's like Pope John Paul uh, hid pedophiles. Yeah, you know. So like, why are you crying? Like these people like were like, hey, come to the Vatican. Well, the last you'll pope be resigned because of the hiding pedophiles. Exactly. Thing. He's the so, only pope to like resign so like, like so three thousand. Like, hey, if you and instead of <laughs> instead of just being like you wow. know whatever, it's like you need to you know people need to think deeply about. Don't this. automatically just it's go. It's not oh, helping. Famous big powerful person dies equals worse sad. Let's let's fucking think about this. Shit. Focus on yourself too. You know, you got people in your own life that need the attention that you're giving to something else. Absolutely, you're gonna spend your next week watching the Queen's funeral. Call your cousin. You haven't talked to them in five years. Yeah, exactly. How's your mom doing? Is she all right? Check up on her. Yeah. Queen Elizabeth is dead, and her fucking 
family is going to be just fine. Dude, and they're going to have fine. their own trials and tribulations and their pressures of all the money and power they have to worry about, all this these paparazzi. It's going to be a nightmare for them. But guess what? We're all people here in this world, and we all are equal under the sun. We all, talking about earlier, we all have the same biological brains in our heads. We're all just wanting the same things out of life. Satisfaction, happiness, the love of our friends and family. I don't think that anyone else is automatically more important than you because of whatever gutter they crawled out of and whatever palace they were in. They're not more important than you are or than I am. Not at all. And not to knock her too much, I think that in the moment... One more time! So, like, I I saw this thing where it was, like, Bear Grylls, when he got some sort of Special Forces award from her, she was very caring and genuine. I think that she... And in the military, Her Majesty's Royal Service. Yeah, exactly. But I think she... uh, This is a a soul who didn't choose whatever was, and she did the best she could with what she had. That's... that uh, You gotta give her that. Like I said, you you said earlier... If you were born... If you were born her... She didn't choose to be it. You would probably do the same thing she did, and I respect that. I think that's totally good. It's all good. Very she was welcome. she was good to the people that she was in the moment with, but as a whole, it's like she's no the, Salman. As a whole, the concept of the queen, people are mad at. You know, I think that she's getting a brunt of the bullshit because she happened to be the soul that was heavy is the head that wears the crown. Maybe her accountability finally comes from the very fact that it's the position she held, not the positions that she took in the world. Yeah, not the soul that she was, but right. we also saw that the souls she, that were in the same place. You, you want to be like a figurehead? Diana, You're the figurehead for monarchy in general. Sorry. Yeah, and the souls that were in the position that she was, like Princess Diana, could have taken it the other way, and she chose not to go Princess Diana's route. There's probably, a reason why her son and his wife went to America and said, I guess we're not welcome exactly, here. They, exactly, so there's a lot to this, where Whereas, like, like I said, Princess Diana decided, like, hey, fuck this, I'm gonna do this. She got killed. She, this is a person who's murdered. Mm. And then, you know, uh, Markle and whatever, was Harry. that Harry? Yeah. They fucking said, fuck this whole thing. Yeah. This is all a bunch of bullshit. You know, and she, the princess, sorry, and, and Queen Elizabeth just stuck to tradition because that's the right thing to do, and we probably would all do the same thing. As she was pretty just committed. Just the whole I mean, you're thing. 50 years in, you really can't cut that. You can't really commit, you can't really back out of that. No. So it's a tough position, but it's also something that no one can relate to. No one on, pos- on no one fucking earth yeah. has ever been in her shoes to do that, but we all, but 99% of people disagree with it. Mm-hmm. And the ones who don't don't think deeply, and they're also, and then those are the people who are impressed. Yeah, or Some they're just more comfortable with the way things are, and that's yeah. just the way it is. It's tradition, like you said initially. Monarchy has always been and still is a product of tradition. It, this is the way things were when my grandfather was born, and the way when my grandson is born, this is the way things will be. Every month or so, we go to the fucking public square. They walk out with the shiny jewels and all the robes, and they wave at all of us, and we all have, for a fleeting five minutes, we feel like the world is a bigger part of who we are by worshipping this person who still takes liquid hot shits. So they're not that much different. That's fine if it's just and right, but but we know that it's not, so it's so controversial and so hard to even comprehend. So that's kind of where the Dylan Jovius podcast is right now, is that like, yeah, this well, is reality. Well, let's let's wrap it up. Let's do final thoughts yeah, right this, now. This is yeah, final thoughts. This is this, so my fa- final thoughts. Final thoughts, Joe C. Because we're going that right now. Brian C. Joe C. No, no relation. No relation at all. Um, um, you know, final thoughts are you know my thing is that like you know when you really really go deep in this is that this That's is a deep. soul who didn't necessarily choose this, had this, and stuck to tradition. And I, I respect that. It's fine. I, you know, I can't say I wouldn't do the same thing. I probably wouldn't. But, you know, like, I, I'm a, I, I like to shake things a little bit. Hmm. Um, this is a person who's born, I think she was born in 1923, 24, 25, 26, something like that. Got to be around there for the age range. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. the 20s I think, yeah, yeah. Not 1930, but not 1920, somewhere in the middle. Um, you know, she did the best she could, and, and um, she didn't cause any harm. Intentionally, she just didn't do anything about the harm that could have been happening through this. And it's also, it's a, she she held a redundant position that didn't really do anything, but also could have had influence. She never spoke up. She could have. She never thing. spoke up, dude. She, she over, the, over she her entire thing, up. she spoke publicly on the count of one hand. This is not someone who went up there and said, I'm the Queen of England. We need to band together through COVID. Everyone needs to, everyone needs to 
you know, this is an issue. At the same time, Princess Diana is hugging people who contracted AIDS. The queen is sitting on her throne going, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. Yes. and that's Sometimes a, inaction is an action itself. Inaction is an action itself, and I think that sums up a lot of this. And that's... Um, um, that speaks a lot, you know? Like, you know, like and Uncle I, Ben I think, said, man, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. And Churchill has to take that on, and the Queen and King don't. Yeah, so does uh, fucking Boris Johnson. So does whoever was before him and, you know, all these things. Yeah. Those people were the ones who went up and spoke about these things and were probably consulted by her, and that's 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 fine. So she had influence. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, if... But no if Look, I like attention. Let's be real. You know? We all do. I mean, we're really recording ourselves having a conversation on a Saturday night. We like attention. Yeah, to some we, we, we fucking do. It's for sure. And if I had that, I'd be like, you know, one, I would have a million advisors who are better at me than everything. That's a great thing. I would never choose someone to be like, oh, I'm better at you than all these things, and I'm going to have you as a helper. But like, no, no. You know more about these things. I'm going to bring you in. Then I'm gonna get up there and I'm gonna speak about these things. You can unite a nation like Winston Churchill did. Yeah. Who made this is a guy who is not perfect. He made mistakes. It's like he killed accidentally a lot of people and then he took And the he on purpose killed even every more. every exactly on purpose for killed the, more, for the cause for of the winning cause the war. of winning the war, which yeah. is the just and right cause. But it was defeating his Nazis causing that defeating happen. Nazis is the right move. Hundred percent of the time. Absolutely. And um and she didn't so everyone has a thing they're like we're paying a million dollars a day. We got a picture of her meeting More? Hitler. It's a pretty good picture. Oh God, are you kidding me? They're pretty happy oh, to meet shit. each other. <laughs> so <laughs> obviously it's before the Blitz, but they are they are shaking hands. I know, and we. But <laughs> I know you. Yeah, Joe, we, find the picture for the pod. Yeah, well we know people who were affected by the Blitz, and it's oh, yeah. like the Pope met him too. He's more than happy to meet him. It's not good. It's not good. It's fucking we'll, not we'll good. We'll let you keep all your pretty odds if you just, uh, just let us Let us take over your thing. And, yeah, exactly. And it's, you know, that's a challenging time. But, like, you know, inaction is a is an issue. And you brought that up and I forgot about that. And that's, this fits perfectly. And, um, <laughs> and, um, it's true. my final thoughts are, yeah, yeah, you're not, you know, I didn't choose to be born by my parents or whatever it is I was. I'm blessed and happy to be so. Yeah, here we but are. But if you're there, here we are. And she had the same thing. Her soul was brought from far the fuck, you know, to this. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. But there was an inaction and also a superiority thing where there's, a, you know, millions of people suffering be to just who are paying. This is a tax. They're paying her This salary. is a taxes thing. <laughs> That's the issue. Like, Let's whenever when you're, when you're yelling. And all the other things you have this is just yearly crown jewels paid. or other countries who want that money back it's 300 million dollars all the wealth jewels. that they stole from the world that doesn't count as part of it. we're talking about actual annual tax revenue to pay for the fucking limousines and yeah, so, the jets the, so and most this, people that. in england in the uk are pissed off because just to just to have this person take a shit costs millions of dollars yeah and they're pissed and they're shit yeah and you're not united you're not whatever it is there's a couple of like core things but it's it's a it's a thing that, like, hey, cool, that generation is, you know, what it is, but it's a, it's a thing that, like, you go, hey, this isn't black and white. This isn't a, oh, the the queen. This, we're not in King Arthur's time where, like, the king said the king is out there on the fucking battlefield, mm-hmm. who's going, we're 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 defeating evil and we're doing this together, which at that time was probably still controversial. At the very least, they're putting their lives at risk for what they believe in. Yeah, and this wasn't the case, and it's just so so strange to think about. Mm. And it's still going on, still as of this week, and will be going on in the foreseeable future. Yeah, and it's tax money. We are, are my so like, the thing is like I, I don't want to get too much in a wormhole here, but like, it's our, final thoughts. It's final thoughts. Um, you know, if you don't support a war that we're in in the United States, mm-hmm. so say all of a sudden we're you're in, still paying for it. You're paying for it, yeah. dude. All of a sudden, like every single bomb that gets dropped on Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, mm-hmm. you know, all the the weapons we're saying to Ukraine, you know, which we you know, most people I know support, mm-hmm. um, whatever it is, we're paying for that. Yeah. So all of a sudden, you go, I don't support the war in Afghanistan. It's like, well, yeah. even you know, if you don't, every your single wallet does every single dollar that you make, you know, you you give basically thirty percent of taxes. That that money is going towards you know built you know dropping bombs on countries and killing civilians killing bad guys killing good guys whatever it is so it's one of those things where it's like you know you kind of gotta think about these things a little deeper as opposed to or not you can be in space um don't be unhappy but it's like you know your your tax money does go towards the country's initiatives and that is that's challenging 
challenging to think about. If we're going to put the the onus of responsibility on people who have immense amounts of power, I think we have to put it on ourselves as well. And, I mean, listen, I'm not doing shit. So it's easy for me to talk here in this undisclosed location about monarchs and this, undisclosed. that, and the other thing. It's very easy for me to do. And I'm going to keep doing it because of the position I'm We're in. doing it. Yeah, it's not but, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you nearly 100% on this thing. Usually on Final Thoughts, we have two different perspectives, or sometimes we wrap things together. But we're almost of the same mind on this topic at large. I'm a little bit more vitriolic about it just because I have this little, you know, renegade sense in my mind of that it's insane to me at all that there's any kings and queens, even just as figureheads, even just as the decorations that will maybe have public policy speeches or whatever, like Elizabeth did, rarely, if ever. Um, but it just it doesn't make any sense to me that it's still going on now and now. And I think it's 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 frankly embarrassing for the whole fucking world that you'd still have one person that you have to look up to and bow down to to tell you how to live your life. And I know a lot of people treat politicians this way, or even just you know celebrities this way. And I like a sports star or celebrity as much as the next person. But the second you take it from, this is an enjoyable person I like to watch and follow, to this person is risen above us, and we need to understand we are lesser than them, and we'll never be as good as them, and they are inherently better than us as a human being. I think you've lost the fucking thread there, and I don't want to blame you for it, because we all have our own little struggles in life, we need to reach these conclusions, but I think as of the year 2022, with the information we have, with the internet, with the massive amount of history behind us, can we agree here as a collective in the basement that we don't need kings and queens and dukes and barons and shit anymore? Yeah. I mean, it comes from running the, the, the fields and tilling the fields, saying that you are the Lord and you have your farm to survive, but don't forget, 50% of your crops go to me. You want to know why? Because I was born in this castle and you were born in this field. Therefore, I'm better than you. Yeah. That's the end of it. That's it. And as, as long as I can raise enough armies, my grandkids are going to do the same thing your grandkids, and that's just the way it is. Because God declared it that way. And if God didn't want it that way, why are you there and I'm here? Yeah. That's just the way it is. Yeah. And it's supposed to be that way because that's the way it is. I think it's gross. I think it's stupid. Fuck your kings. Your leaders don't care about you. Stop worshiping them and start taking them to task for what they do and also importantly what they don't do exactly that's all i have to say about it that's good and and one person that you know like you know someone who makes you feel that way you know barack obama did he makes you feel good this is a guy who makes you feel like he's he you know if i i, I charismatic gen- leader i generally feel like if we if if barack obama listens to podcasts it's and he said hey dylan joe i want to meet you guys You'd be like, hey, you, you know, like it would feel like you're you're on equal playing ground. This is a guy who was the president of the country for eight years, yeah. and um, no no one agrees with 100 percent of what he did. No, I mean, I think he's cared. If I was in the same room as him, I'd probably go to jelly like everybody else and be like, oh, Barack, you're so. Charming. No, but 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 would I would you, love you, dude, would but you, he killed would you... more people than any other president with the drone strikes. You exactly. Talk about that no, for, no, that's the thing. But but overall, if you went to he him, was against gay marriage until he got elected. I mean, what are there's we talking also about there all, all these people. Are all, all these <laughs> I'm talking are about all everyone. Fucked. Bernie Sanders, same thing. He's all Bernie fucked. Bernie Sanders was wicked fucked in the '80s. Even our and, favorite ones. I'm saying no, but if you go them, you go, you go. They don't make you feel like you're less than. You go, hey, it's nice to meet you guys. Guys, like they, you know, whatever. They go, hey, Dylan, what, do you, what, what, what are you like? What's going on? What, how's your day going? And like, they make you feel good, you know, sure. because they make you feel like you're not you're like, hey, you're no better than anyone else, and no one's better than you. Gotcha. And I, I appreciate that. Yeah. I've heard to make different decisions, but I just feel this with her that the, the lack of this, the lack of that, is uh, is a problem. Mm. When you have so much power, where you could be like, all of a sudden, like, I mean, you know, like we could get up and say something, you know? Yeah. Be like, hey, guys. This is what's going on. Let's let's. You, if you actually are blessed enough to have complete authority to say, "Hey, I'm going to be on the news. We're going to cancel everything right now." I'm going to get up and say, "Hey, guys, you're all fucking kick ass as fuck. Everyone here, you guys are all part of this country, a beautiful country that has huge history. Um, and uh, there's struggles. There's a lot of problems here. We're addressing them. But each of you know that you're well loved." And we're fighting for a good cause. We're fighting for this. 
are fighting for equality, we're fighting for unity, we're fighting for love, peace, happiness, whatever it is. Um, each of you know that you can play, play, have a place in this world. You'll have a stronger country. Ukraine is doing that right now. Mm. They have the fucking guy, you know, Thanks. right now who's saying, hey, we're all going to band together and do this. You can do that when peace is there. Not when war, not just because of war. Yeah, war because that, yeah. not yeah, war will do that. You know, but besides that, it's like, hey, we we're strong or whatever it is. You know, you can do that. And there's just there was a lack of that. It's insane. Mm-hmm. Like, why would you if you have that power, you have an actual power to do good. Besides yes. being influential, why not get up there and take that risk? Life is about being like, you know, get up there. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be very difficult to do and say the right thing. Yep. Like get up there and say something, and say, and then all of a sudden, everyone goes. You can flip the switch immediately, even if you don't do a whole lot by saying the right thing, the the proud thing, the um, the strength, and you can you can turn a country from like we fucking hate the monarch, we hate government, we hate fucking this, we hate that. You say we're we are everyone, every fucking. You work at Subway, you you are in the military, you are in tech, you are in whatever it is. We're all together. We're banding stronger. These are our goals. Mm-hmm. This is what we're gonna make. You guys are a part of that. Everyone would shit their brains yeah, and go well. and go fuck yeah. All of a sudden, you provided the most important thing to any living being in this fucking world, and that's meaning. Mm. Anyone who's working, because no one's, most people are not, you know, past the point of working. All of a sudden, everything they do has meaning, and right. this could have been that. A million years to, to prove this, and it just all of a sudden turned into like I'm, you know, you're paying for my gold toilet seat. It's like, come on, you know. True. So, by Jove, I think we've done it, don't you? Ah, oh, my boy, mates, I think we, uh, you know, chip, chip. burned out the Bobby for too long. <laughs> <laughs> that's Australia for you. I think um, we've done it. That's it. That's the Dylan Joe Basin podcast. Uh, that's a marquee. The Queen has passed away, and um, we. Uh, respect and uh, appreciate that but overall you heard our thoughts so the queen is dead long live the djbp see you guys next week such as under the couch we're not (laughs) we're not very tidy brian 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 Brian. Anyway, the closet, the all right. The shed, sure. I don't know why you're out okay, there, cool, but yeah. under the couch, Brian. Good. What are you doing under the couch? <laughs> exactly. You've been in 10 grand to hide under the fucking love seat? Shit, that pussy fucking kills us. <laughs> this is a real place full of strangers. Yes. If you want to rub a cum towel all over your face, Brian, there's places <laughs> for that. It's not this particular Airbnb. It's. Yeah, and you gotta you gotta be careful with that shit, dude. Like, you know, I'll make sure the closets have room for you to go into your grandson next time you stay. But right now, let's let's move on to the monarchy. God save the queen. God save the queen. And he, because he just smoked his whole life, he developed lung disease. It got so bad. One moment. <laughs> it got so bad. I wish that everyone who died in the pool died in a pool of wine. Yeah, me too. Because I have a heart. Yeah, that's it. Then searching for it is good. Yeah. But don't make that, like, everything. It's like, no, just have a good time. True. So when it comes back to the monarchy, it's like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> so he's kind of a piece of shit monster who did it. But yeah. he did it for the right reasons, because that knocking really is a pain in my ass. Yeah, and if, the, if it weren't for that, me and Joe probably wouldn't have this podcast, because we'd be too smart to have it. <laughs> <laughs>